Uh, before we begin, let it be known that fuck you, George Washington. Fuck you and the powdered wig you wear. Hey there! Uh, <laughs> uh, welcome to another Dice Scum Live. I'm Adam, and I did a coin flip to determine how we were what we were covering tonight. I did not like the results. I'm Imsit, and I actually do like it, so we can get this over with. You know, when you frame it like that, it almost makes me not want to be in a Capellan re-education center. All right, let's just rip the bandage off and see, uh, and see how they rip off essentially the BattleTech Intersphere uh, uh, books. You know, the Intersphere books that they did. Because Chapter Seven, Home Directory. This chapter is a dossier of the various factions, side characters, and other encounters on Grand Cross. Which, if you don't remember, it is a super huge space station, kind of like Side Seven or Side One from Gundam. Actually, it, it essentially is, since they're O'Neill cylinders. You know, real sci-fi, real hard sci-fi. But run by both the world governments, but also is very, very Western for some reason. Even though a lot of the Western, even though a lot of the developed countries are in the same hemisphere that would have been destroyed by a Tunguska event. Oh, also, there's robotic Jews. The book insults you if you actually choose to fight. And all cops. All of them. Every single one of them. Are bastards. Oh, and also, I just realized... Uh, let me let me turn to live chat. Don't worry, I, I, I caught that early, viewers. So, your, your opinions will be validated. So, uh, let's start off with the Offworld Cartel. These are your unabashed bad guys, because they are all super capitalistic evil space pigs that have decided to destroy their finances by all moving their headquarters, employees, and everything up there. You know, ignoring that uh, the infrastructure to set that up would be fucking insane, but whatever. <laughs> you see, now they can get rid of that pesky, you know, world law stuff. Uh, oh, are they are they following Admiralty Court? Are all of them sovsets? Do they just follow the Articles of Confederation? That would... That would certainly be an interesting this twist. Is an admiral, <laughs> this is an admiralty court. Archon Assets is not considered a person of your United States. Neither is it a, co a co-signer of the Articles of the Geneva Convention as well as the United as well as the League of Nations. The the United Nations is an illegal organization. <laughs> oh man, I have a headache, and this is just gonna make it worse. Well, don't worry, because Archon Assets is all about banking. You know, the least stressful occupation. Banking, futures, investment, investment. Uh, insurance. So, yeah, it's just a big bank. Archon is the economic heart of the cartel. They're the primary lender of most cartel members and give them financial advice, too. Ostensibly, they're independent, but major cartel members own stakes in Archon. Most of its directors come from other corporations. Uh, last I checked... I think that might actually be illegal in a lot of countries. Not all countries, but like from remember uh, it's in space though. Oh yeah, space law. <laughs> oh hey, great and spooky. Magna Carta. If I spell my name in caps, it's not me. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Arkan Assets is a shell company, obviously used by the other corporations to embezzle. Though technically, it's not a shell. It's apparently. A merger of several pre-impact banks. It rose prominently thanks to its position in the relatively untouched African region. Um, uh, early okay. adopted new technologies. No, 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 no. Do you know how reliable and financially stable banks in Africa are? Because let me tell you, there's a beautiful country down there called Zimbabwe, which is well, so <laughs> amazing in its financial security. That it uses the United States dollar, mainly because its actual money is, I think, I, I think it's equivalent to one dollar here, is, I think it's five quintillion Zimbabwean dollars. Well, I mean, if we're Just, just talking... as a testament. Now, now let's be fair. Other, yeah. other African banks are probably a little more, or a lot more stable, but not really the source of the financial dominance of this world, if in my opinion. 
Yeah, not not really. Uh, unless somehow. I mean, to be fair, unless you're somehow that of... that like East Africa Union somehow really hit it off. Uh, if I remember, it, Kenya's uh, Kenya uh, to a lesser degree, Tanganyika. I think their banks are relatively stable-ish. Stable-ish. I mean, to be fair, the North Hemisphere is screwed, but ironically. I think you might do better by using Australian banks as the source. Which I'm surprised, considering the author's Australian. Or or the Chinese-owned Indonesian banks, because a lot of Indonesian financial institutions are owned by the Chinese. It's, you can uh, thank Suharto okay. for that, by the way. Uh, continuing on... Uh, I'm just, I'm just explaining dirty... things, uh, and I could be wrong, but I'm just explaining things that our Australian writer probably did not know. Uh, so shifting dirty money for criminal groups, uh, pride itself on dealing with people from all walks of life, but they have money, and many crossers have Archon accounts. Regular folks sometimes get charged with fake fees, given subpar advice, uh, or sold on plans they don't need. Uh, why would a bank give subpar advice on the money that they would end up owning? Because uh, the writer hates banks, because he is a dyed-in-the-wool... You know that you know that type. He's that type of dyed in the wool fella who is against all of these things while consuming all of the products that these corporations give him. You know. Uh, in this case, I, I'm actually kind of pleasantly surprised he is ragging on banks, even though his understanding of how a corrupt bank works is pretty funny. If you're if you're wondering, uh, traditionally, if uh, corrupt banks, what they instead do is they essentially put money into shit like Enron. <laughs> They, they, if you're gonna play corrupt economic, you know, in a corrupt financial sector, you put your money in, you put your money in Ponzi schemes, or you run them, or you have people start them and then you do it, or you, or you set up essentially shell games. You're not going to, to essentially bilk people out of that. That's like penny stocks level crime. And don't get me wrong, you can do that, but the whole point of a bank is you want liquidity. You want people to actually trust and put money into you. Which is why I'm actually wondering, why didn't they have them run a crypto scam? That's a that's a thing, especially if you, uh, like, they're part of the cartel, right? So have them work together with another cartel bank. You know, not another cartel bank, but another cartel corporation that runs computers and electronics, right? And all of those computers and electronics are intentionally partially given malware that takes a small percentage of their CPU processing power to mine its own coins that are then shunted into Archon's bank so they control it. I mean, that's a simple scam off the top of my head. Blunt, but it would work. Look, I'm just, I'm just trying to say, like, if you're going to be a corrupt bank, like, there's some things in here that would be genuine. Charging fake fees, that is a thing that sometimes banks do, uh, really corrupt banks do. Giving Sarpar advice, no, because you, you have to, uh, you want to be sold thing. Uh, the aggressively selling plans, though, that is the bank in a T. Ba banks do like to make money off of lines of what they should be doing is aggressively selling lines of credit, actually. Because let me tell you, that that's like where a lot of the predatory money crap is coming from. Because think about it from from our point of view, from my point of view. If you loan like two thousand dollars in the form of a line of credit, that person has to constantly make, uh, has to constantly pay that back, right? That's a reliable income source for your bank to manage, uh, to manage and grow with, and to put it into its own stockpile. And possibly to, is somehow make the ledger look clean. Yeah, that's the thing. At the end like of the day, like show they're not storing so much from these criminal groups. Yeah, that's the thing. B banking is not really a reliable source if you're going to use it as like a black market thing. Traditionally, that that would actually explain the crypto scam, by the way, because crypto is traditionally used for criminal activity. So wait a minute, why didn't they use payday loans? Like if if they're gonna rail on banks. Why didn't why didn't say Archon also does payday loans? I don't know how it is in Australia, but yeah, pay, payday loans are the most predatory things I can think of. I think we've been 
discussing about this more than probably the author has, but I do want to add the culture uh, Yeah, section because the to... assets, uh, they're in Central District. It's, uh, they have a tower, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. They say um, they want to make themselves look like they're making... You know, they're forward-thinking, making investments, adopt technology, and pink capitalism. Which, if you're you know, wondering, the, that's the... The African! The, the African bank. <laughs> that actually would be kind of funny. Like, m maybe the original bank... That would be a fun little, like, nod to, like, maybe the original bank actually had a lot of trouble for dis uh, with discrimination suits because of their native African country really hating uh, homosexuality. So this is like them trying to rebrand and escape that past. How much does Archon funnel into DEI NGOs? Who knows? But uh, yeah, they want to pretend that they're cool and hip, even though banks never are. Uh, but it's a demanding work environment. Employees are told that they're the most important people in the cartel and are expected to think ahead before making major actions. The company's president is uh, Le Leke Afolayan, which I think is an actual... <laughs> that might actually be an actual African. This is the first uh, non-white guy who, who treats his company like crap. Th that's a big step for Hardwired Island. It's being diverse in its villains. Uh, going by a quick online search, at least that last name, it's apparently Nigerian? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean that's fair. It's West African. Um, yeah, and Nigerian yeah. is notorious for its scam culture. It, it's a it's a corruption of the because Nigeria is home to the Yoruba peoples and a variety of other tribes that were very mercantile in their past. They're very much big into haggling, selling, and buying and that sort of thing. But uh, also, they're very very obsessive on wealth, and scamming gets wealth. It becomes pretty popular over there because of that. <laughs> the Archon CEO. Why are you gay? <laughs> I was just thinking of him of him running a, um, a Nigerian prince scam. I must ask you, as the CEO of this bank, why are you gay? <laughs> Unironically. And that's where the lawsuit came from. <laughs> Uh, but he's obsessed with simulations, which uh, I think that might be an attempt at making fun of, like, the tech boys, you know, the tech boy booms. I don't know. Uh, like I said, overall, my problem with the bank is I, I get where they're coming from, corrupt African bank. But the methods they're using are a bit wrong, especially since um, one of the fun things is, is you could actually have their... Equivalent, uh, they could actually be buying the cops and serving as, like, their loan sharks or creditors. You know, the ones that basically break your legs if you don't pay them. Because l l let me tell you, you want to know a fun fact about Nigeria? They had an entire police unit dedicated to hunting down scammers. They became a cartel and actually were well known for either beating the living shit out of scammers to take their money and suborn them to their own cause or just disappear them and take it all. They were actually nastier than the scammers. So, you know, you can have some creativity. I don't I don't hate the concept of a corrupt bank as, like, one of the main antagonists or one of the main corporations that you're kind of dealing with. I just feel like it, the way it was handled was a bit off. And I'm also going to throw a shade. Just generic African. Hey. Well, they, they don't really specify, yeah, what area, which would determine it, some of the cultural uh, climate for the company. Again, by that president's last name, it might be Nigerian. But again, like, we don't know. Like, the next one, uh, uh, Son of Heavy uh, Industries, yeah, Japanese. Japanese. It's a Zaibatsu. So, I think we did go over this, or at least talked a lot about Asano previously. Yeah, because uh, their their family is psychotic and is in an eternal gang war with itself, from what I understand. Japan's recovery from the lost decade was fueled in part by the research boom and the foray into space construction. Uh, the, the problem with that is the Japanese space program, is, even back then, was still kind of puny compared to others. 
I mean, I, I imagine if they got a good deal with NASA and worked together, they could probably crawl out of it, especially if you have speculators and real estate dudes. You know, the same predatory monsters that destroyed Japan's economy kind of working that deal. But people love the people love that kind of 90s Asia will rule the world setting for sci-fi. But uh, at the end of the day, it's kind of a it's kind of a dream, you know, kind of a dream and a speculative dated item. Because in Japan's case, uh, usually people like to think the yen is like the equivalent of one penny. It's worse now. I think it's like one seventh of a penny now. But yeah, their their economy is still in horrible fucking shambles even now, like 40 years, 40 years. It is the longest financial catastrophe in, in on record. And China builds roads out of garbage, like literal bridges made out of garbage. They have a thing called tofu dry construction. Their economy works almost like a crappier version of the, you know, the funny mustache man and how he, how he had that MIFO bill scam to cook his economy to death, to lie to, you know, to his investors and shit before he invaded and stole gold reserves. Yep. China kind of operates on that. Only they use territory instead of gold reserves. That's why the belt and road initiative was so pushed by them. It gives their companies more outlets to kind of lie about their economical growth. But Piak says, well, the whole setting is a bit off since his idea holds wields powers exactly backwards. The author is basically saying the evil fascist wet streets are causing the rain. Not the reverse. <laughs> I'm trying to understand. The, you mean that, like... Basically, it's saying because the streets are wet, that causes the rain. Yeah, I get it, they're, but... They're working backwards. Yeah. Instead of saying... Actually, uh, P, could you maybe explain more? Yeah, because I, I'm trying to understand who you think the cause is behind the shit show that is uh, this entire space station. And, and as you do as... that, don't don't feel bad. Uh, let's yeah. get into the background for this. So, uh, the Asano... Uh, Hide and Asano basically struck it big. They managed to get really early on into robotics. My guess is that's what really did it. They got really lucky on the you know the primitive VI and AI set, and that just became standard. So they made gangbusters, because that's kind of how Silicon Valley works. You can fund a thousand ideas. Ninety nine of nine ninety nine hundred ninety nine of them could all fail, and you and you lose millions. One success seeds though, and you make billions back. So them actually kind of becoming this gigantic corporation isn't out of the blue for me. 3D printable lunar building designs. I, I, oh, three, that's it. What, what's your thoughts on making a 3D printer so big you can build construction equipment, like buildings out of? I mean, it's impractical, it. but I would love it. The, the sheer scale and the time crunch, the Oh, man, that's insane. Oh, Asteroid mining okay. Worlds. So uh, if you're wondering, Piax's uh, concept is it's not the corporations themselves that are evil. It is actually they're pre getting pressured by social groups either within or without their investments or activists that do. That That's his point of view, where it's... Corporation is just bi is big is big and dumb, but is guided to do bad by the people guiding it. I see. But anyway, yeah, this guy was a uh, this guy had a lot of kids. They're kind of murdering every each other. What's the what's the Japanese corporation from uh, Cyberpunk? Arasaka. Yeah, is this just ripping that off? It might be. the The difference is, uh, Hide seems to be less scary, and their abilities and assets are less scary. Bit of a a bit of a nod, by the way. He passed over the women and uh, his his daughters because they he had assumed they'd want to raise kids instead. And then and then the ones who insisted. He, he rejected one of his daughters because you remind me of my ex-wife. I hate my wife. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to lie. I kind of like that. That's that's like amazingly petty. <laughs> I love it. 
How dare my shit son try to sabotage the others? It, it's more because you got caught, though. That's the fucking problem. And last but not least, you pissed off my favorite client. His successor is just the only one left by default. <laughs> You're my heir, because all your other siblings are more disappointing than you. <laughs> okay, I'll give the writer this. I actually, <laughs> I actually unironically like this company. <laughs> like, the, the mindset and details behind it are funny. Yeah, it's a, it's a mishmash of all the cyberpunk Japan, of course, Piak. So the the asset they have a lot of assets. Their culture though, their culture is they're trying to project the image of a friendly corporation where their employees are family. They even limit overtime. Uh, yeah, but then it's just your standard Japanese company where they literally work you to death. But it's a family now. Yeah, it's it's just your it's like standard corporate. It's the standard corporation thing where it's like. One of the quickest, one of the things you should immediately run from if you're going through job interviews is if the company says that they are family. Not family owned. If they, it, it's, there's two of them. Work hard, play hard, run away. We treat you like family, run away. Because both of those will usually have this happen. I mean, as a whole, Asano's more cleverly constructed but that's just because he kind of already had sources to rip off you know internally not rip off but you know he had stuff to work off of from anime and other things already and, and their standard corporate problems are kind of the same thing that you see you get what i mean like it's plausible yeah the next you want to move on to the next one? Oh yeah gary in aerospace so uh this one this one we've actually covered before too I think it's run by the equivalent of Elon Musk. I do know that um, their big thing is they actually took over a lot of transportation and they made it worse. Which might be the Australians' understanding of how the British railway system fell the fuck apart. That's the software for space travel and logistics. Oh, yeah. controls most of the cross rails. Their mismanagement has caused delays across the network and burden mm -hmm. the Grand Metro... People start taking um, the subway for longer trips. Euron blames it on the public sector, but but they run most of the rail lines. Yeah, you'd think they would run the metro, like the subway. How, yeah, but how can you blame the public sector for the failings of... Like, would it just only make sense if they controlled... Like, let's say if this was, like, they did corporate-only transportation... And then they blame the public sector. It's like they're crowding the, the traffic lanes. I'm trying to figure out mass management, Burning Grand Metro. Garyan blames it on the public sector. They're trying to... The excuse they give is... This is pretty clearly trying to make fun of pe uh, the, your big tech bros like Elon Musk and crap like that. This is them trying... This is the writer trying to make it seem like they're... like I think it's just him making them incompetent. Like, they're just so delusional and willing to ignore blame that they're just trying to invent excuses for their own failures. Unless unless the company is actually blaming the the public for allowing their cities to let them buy the, the railways. You know what I kind of have a problem with, though? The fact it took less than a year for everything to fall apart when they owned it. Because they, they've only been around for a year. You know, I can, I can actually... Actually, not even of... a year. Not even a year. Like, they, they owned him for a month. So, no, I think they perfectly have rights to blame the public sector. Who the, no, I, I, who the fuck thought it was a good idea to give these guys this? Like, I mean, if you wanted of... to actually, actually be practical, I can see the reason for this failing... Is because whoever built Grand Cross is not the did not use the same technology or work as Garon. 
And that's why everything's fucked up. Oh yeah, they used a completely different programming language and have their own different software design. Like, it's a completely different setting that they have. Hey Jim Jones, we're making fun of the... Uh, we're kind of agreeing with and occasionally making fun of the author for his understanding of corporations. We covered Africa, evil African bank that questions why are you gay? Although that's more of our shit posting because uh, it is an African bank. Uh, we covered a standard Japanese zaibatsu run by the greatest Japanese dad of all time. Not really, but he's still funny. And uh, now an even dumber version of Elon Musk. I guess fused with uh, who's Lex Luthor in real life? I forget his name. He's a trillionaire. Got got uh, managed to get cucked by his own wife. Uh, Jeff Bezos. Yeah, yeah, Lex Luthor. So, it's like a their love child managed to screw, fail his way from in one year. By the way, keep that in mind. Infant in one year, they went from like five guys in a shed. Well, what did they even sell? Supply Software. chain program. Which means they're sup. They they, they, they started Uber. They started the equivalent of Uber. Twelve months ago, they started the equivalent of Uber, where they, I guess, drove their own equivalent of, like, mopeds and Vespas and shit like that. And in the span of a year, they now own the entire railway network, other than the subway. Again, how is this the company's fault? How is it the company's fault that the city willingly accepted their contract? Because the city had to accept it. That's an insult to Lex Luthor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lex Luthor is actually yeah. successful uh, as a president and as a business mogul. The only thing he was and actually bad at doing was killing Superman. And again, I don't think he got cucked, so... Oh, no. Oh, no. Lex Luthor is the one who cucks. Well, moving on to the next corporation. Oh, no, 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 let's get in. The, when the U.S. started offering cash incentives to space-based businesses who worked with them, Silicon Valley started tossing piles of money at any startup with a space-related idea and a halfway decent plan on how to get there. And here's the author being a cunt. In some cases, like the infamous space juice, just putting space in your name is enough. Yeah, go fuck yourself, you Aussie bastard. Reminder, your country killed a bunch of Malaysians when they were trying to escape their horrible life in, in the homelands. Garion's founders were lured by the promise of cash to cheap space chick tickets. Once in space, they signed an under-the-table agreement with G Unity Minister Elon Musk, I mean Jimmy Bachman, but it secured them a sweet deal on most of the crossware. So, okay, this makes even less sense. So a single, a single elected official somehow had the power, one elected official, by the way, which is closer to the Westminster and Washminster system that Australia and the UK have, by the fucking way, in terms of how stupid this is. Just just keep that in mind. One guy. Out of how many? How many people do they have? Something like 500 people? Since it's based on the US's Congress? I think. So, 535 people, then. One guy. Oh, no, I think... A single guy in that entire I, I body. Thought, I thought Unity was in charge. It doesn't matter. It's one guy from there. This would be the equivalent. Okay, th to give you an idea, this would be the equivalent of... N name, name, like a random, or name like a random House of Representative member. Doesn't have to be local. It's just like anyone you can think of. Like, like one of the one of the twenty one of the fifty house uh, rep representative members in California, right? Not even like a leader, just like a random bumbo who just got in. That'd be the equivalent of that fucker giving control of the entire infrastructure, road and rail infrastructure, of the state of California to like some asshole and his five friends who ran an Uber out of a garage. You get what I mean on how this is kind of horseshit and doesn't work at all? Even, like, if you apply 0.5% of a brain cell? Like, like Jimmy, you, you get a... what I mean? 
Yeah, so you say I'm not a betting man, but I would bet we would make a better setting easily. If if you yes. if you had me pound back an entire an entire bottle of wine, and then I decided to get even further crunk by ripping into some weed and risking schizophrenia, I know for a fact that I'd either create something as stupid as fucking chalt, or something better than this. Like it is ama- Like my problem with this is that in terms of scale of expansion, in terms of how the deal worked, none of this fucking makes sense. Y- you know what might have made more sense? Is if the chair, if the head chairman, like you have Jimmy Bachman, be the head chairman of the Grand Cross Public Railways Initiative, you know, like uh, the equivalent of a senatorial body that works on a specific problem. And he happens to be a friend of the guy who of this guy, and maybe his his thing is he has a successful space shuttle company. You know, he funnels supplies from the moon to to Grand Cross, right? It, like it's relatively big, but it's not a big corporation. Big. You get what I mean? Yeah, and then it's flush then with government give, money and yeah, he gives him the contract and he's flush with money. But the problem is, he's an aerospace engineer. He's not a railway technician. His computer systems is based on the same programming used in the United States Space Shuttle program. It is not capable of being run on the exact same terminals that a fucking train is. Different programming but, language, different time constraints, different training. And that's why things are fucking up. And the thing is, is that this guy <laughs> in charge of this company doesn't want to admit failure because the investors will then pull out and his company will go under so he's having to essentially fake that everything's going fine it's everyone else's problem and he also has and, a, he also has a senator buddy essentially saying you can't resign yeah. buddy and and you know what this is this is an honest god critique of capitalism you can say that the failure of this company is entirely because of the profit motive Yep, and, and on top you go. of that, you have a you have an anti you have an anti capitalist message that makes sense. Like you can even have the corporate head got head actually hate the arrangement he's in. Like he actually thinks this was the biggest mistake his company's ever made, but he stuck Ooh, with it contractually. I, then I have, and you tie this in with the player characters where he actually says to them, find some way to just completely wipe everything to blame it on the government or something like that, so they have to cut the contract, but my company lives. Because let me tell you, kids, do you want to know Do you want to know how we get a lot of our resources? I'm the one, I'm one of the biggest shipping magnets that brings in food from Earth. That's why I was hired on to run the system. I was able to make a supply chain that allowed us to go from Earth to Mars. They thought I could do the same with trains. Guess what? Trains don't work that way, pal. And and also actually, uh, Jim, the way the way this kind of arrangement works is very much closer to the British and Australian way of how politics works. And I'm not fucking with you. The the nightmare that is the British motorway system, as well as their new train systems, started in the exact same fucking way. And that might be that might be what he was going for. Let's be fair. He might be making fun of the nature of the Westminster system here. Or at the very least, the the, na- the, network, the nature of the British railway system. You know what I mean? It could be that. But I, I just don't get that vibe, you know? Still, uh, my big issue with Garion is, like, it's just, it's poorly designed. It's clearly a big screw you to the big uh, crypto techie bros. Not not well designed. Not well designed at all. Bacon, what I miss? We're talking about the corporations in Hardwired Island. Yeah, especially the African bankers who keep going, why are you gay? And and to escape getting lawsuited, they just put rainbows on their ATM machine. It's fine. It's fine. Our 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 our, our CEO is a is a homophobe, but he he's gotten better, I swear. And and then cut to like an online no longer... news article where yeah. he says, "The homosexuality is a disease, and no. I am of the no, thought no, that you need to go to therapy." He stopped using certain words to describe them and just calls them gay. <laughs> That'd be funnier, yeah. 
I, I just envision like this most conf like, this, like he's not even trying to be offensive, but it's like I, I am here to cure your illness. <laughs> I'm here to cure your illness. He's considered progressive by his country because in his country they would have they would have ended you in Minecraft, you know. Speaking of ending people, private military corporation Goliath oh, Incorporated. Goliath Inc. Uh, this is probably a nod in making fun of the PMC companies that the U.S. and Russia, to a lesser degree, used it over the years. Pretty, it pretty much is. It says Barlow's boys were once members of the Australian Defense Force, deployed to help the U.S. with post-impact operations. Eventually, they left the ADF, signed on with a better-paying PMC, um, and were most likely implicated in war crimes. I'm actually curious in how you... Well... No, I mean, the UN soldiers somehow managed to commit them even in very simple peacekeeping operations. I mean, that's what Blackwater did. That too. The, hey, remember I mean, when again, Blackwater it, hired that one completely delusional and paintball enthusiast who lied about his uh, military career? I'm not even not. kidding. Like, there was, this, uh, there was this complete fraudster lunatic. Who like was the biggest case, like amazing case of stolen valor? Pretended he was a green beret and everything. And, and his big contribution, uh, besides being a an insane person, is he revolutionized paintball because he invented like a variety of things for paintball. I, th I think he got tapped by like Blackwater, or at the very least, he worked regularly with them in the United States military in Afghanistan. And by the way, <laughs> it just says war war crimes, so. We don't know they what they could've... did. It could it could yeah, be they... it could be SA. They could have uh, violated people. They could have they could have accidentally killed innocents. Like they could have been a May Lai massacre. They, they could have used white boss like for a certain a small, shotgun. You know? It could be Spec Ops the line. Oh yeah, you're right. Because uh, fun fact, uh, uh, was it the shotgun? F uh, when it was brought into World War One, the Germans declared it an immediate war crime. I think it was a specific kind of shotgun. Like that. I know they at least was it mustard gas. Well, mustard gas was one, but the, remember the Germans pioneered but, a lot of the chemical weapons. Which again, because Hitler actually didn't use in World War Two because again he experienced it. Uh, from what I understand, there was one period he considered it, but then he realized that that would just open retaliation. And, and and if I recall right, the one time he considered using it was on the Soviets. He never considered using it on the West, I think. Ah, uh, so the people he didn't consider human. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it could be Spec Ops line. Uh, it could just be something as simple as they used cluster munitions, which is considered a war crime in, I believe, every country except the United States. Cluster munitions is banned in most militaries. The U.S. is one of the few that still allow it. Yeah, the trench room. Screw signing international agreements. <laughs> yeah. It could just be, like, we don't know. We're going to assume they did horrible things, though. Uh, let's see. List, um, caused a minor international scandal. That's when the cartel approached Barlow with offer. Become the official guards. And they influenced to keep his team from being extradited. Okay, so they probably did some major stuff. Yeah, like, we're talking if, pretty serious. If... The only way for them to not be extradited is to be in space. I, yeah. I I will say, though, that I think it's not worth actually destroying your, like, any, because this is a lot of clout you're burning on just these assholes. And just because they're willing to commit war crimes, that doesn't necessarily make them good at their job. Yeah. It means that they'll uh, they'll do anything you ask for them, but I just think it's not really worth like there. There's a line in terms of how much you gain out of how much you lose when you do evil things, you know. Like if you're gonna go like full douchebag asshole villain or corporate greed, you gotta do a cost benefit analysis of hiring the baby murderer, the cannibal, and the dude who touches people. Like you got you got to figure out whether or not 
your your establishment as a respected member in society as your cover for your true evil nature. Well, well, at least the cannibal can clean up his own crimes. Yeah, you could hire him, but probably not the bad touch man. Because, no. let's be fair, people he serves with might just shoot him. And that's going to be an awful take-your-child-to-work day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> at least the cannibal offers an interesting barbecue. Just, just make sure, just make sure that, uh, just make sure to remind everyone that uh, it is not kosher and it is not halal, and you'll be fine. <laughs> it's fine. Just, just say it's pork. It's, it's long pork. It's fine. He somehow bring. It, he somehow says it's vegan. <laughs> it's technically vegan. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know how uh, to define this. Oh God, I'm just remembering. Oh man. Uh Should should I talk about the story of the man who made a taco out of his foot? Is this a 4chan thing? No, this is an actual thing that happened. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, very quick. Uh dude got into a horrific motorcycle accident and they had to take the leg. He decided out of just a grim curiosity since it was his, le you know, it's his fucking leg. Let's see what this is like. So he made carne asada style tacos out of it. Did it taste like chicken? Uh, in his own word, it tasted like a strange mixture of veal and pork. You know, strangely, I think I've... People have asked cannibals, and I think that was what they it's said. A, he, he described it as a strange mixture of veal and cork, uh, pork. It had a stringy element to it, too. But it tasted like that... any normal... Uh... That like, too. like you would not be able to place what the fuck you ate if you didn't know where it came from. Yeah, Jim Jones. Uh, there's a reason I na I t I titled this. I wish I was in a Capellan reeducation center. All right. Um, I am in a <laughs> I am in a dark place because the coin told me I had to look at hardwired fucking island tonight. Uh. Let's see. Assets. Uh, unassuming Last line of defense in... against order and chaos says the people who violated the international laws on war and would be publicly executed to the cheers of millions at home. Go fuck yourself. Uh, you know what? I'm wondering why they became the official guards. I guarantee you they're paying on the cheap. <laughs> like this is the lowest bid. Besides public cops. Why don't you just why don't you just ask for like a oh wait I mean at that point you might, you might as well just arm homeless people and have them do it. They probably have more morals and actually won't rob you as badly either. Just make sure to get them their their, their usual drug cocktail and a hamburger. Oh lord. Heather Gatz, Liao, uh, German term for corporation. I, I forget what no, GM. Is, I don't I feel like that's pharmacy. Are they a pharma? Yeah, they're a pharmaceutical. Yeah, I don't know what the. It's a. It's an abbreviation of a very complicated German word. Um, okay. I'm gonna butcher the German. Gesellschaft mit Misrachter Haftung, company with limited liability. It's some LLC. Reason, some. It's uh, an LLC. Before you get in, uh, your microphone is getting a bit poppy for some reason. All right. Better? No. Well, while while Imsit fixes it, we'll go into this Germano-Chinese uh, corporation. This multinational corporation supplies much of the station's health needs, from medicines to medical implants to treatments for space diseases. There's illnesses from space now. Hedegaard's Liao is a sprawling monster of a company, the results of generations of mergers and shifts to focus. Every incarnation has been run by the Liao family! I think I think this is a Battletech nod. Ipset, I think this is a Battletech nod. I wasn't even I, I was I was I like I picked I picked my title card name after my emotional status tonight, and it fits! 
I kind of wish that the current head of House Liao was the crazy, what, what was he, the crazy milkman farmer who, who then became a political radical before going back into like selling soda pops or something weird? Wait, yeah, that, that, yeah, Jim, that's basically what this is. It's way you or the company. The history of Hergatz Liao is long and murky. The original incarnation was technically a Hong Kong restaurant in the 19th century. But the Liao family changed their business every generation or two when someone new took over. In the 20th century, they underwent a number of mergers and splits. How? How in your horrible... Oh, wait, you're from Hong Kong. Okay. Within a business and family until they owned a lot of small companies in many different fields. Post-impact, most of them remerged into the Liao conglomerate. That was the Liao founder. Oh, the Liao founder just started a Chinese restaurant back in the day. So right now it's currently owned. Oh, wait. The most successful of these being Hergat Liao Cosmetics Company owned by Terry Liao. My, my question is why in the hell is it a German conglomeration now? It, it's clearly the equivalent of Tencent, right? So where does the German aspect come in? Is it just a case of how, is this like a little nod to how Chinese companies have a bad habit of stealing, literally stealing German names just to lie about their high quality? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The Liao founder was like a meat seller who became a, who became a political radical and, and, and freedom fighter slash, uh, slash guy who, who was reported on news before I think going back to like running a business he had a hell of a ride M said is your is your mic fixed am I all alone in this universe drifting around as a cosmic brain in the darkness existential I can feel it anyway before I, I snap out before I snap uh, into some weird existential crisis uh, yeah, the current leader is a guy named Trilobite. The writer of this work, for some reason, has decided to name his own child, the child of, Ter of Terry Liao, who for some reason uh, uh, runs a German company, a German branch of the company. He has decided to name his son after a, a, an extinct genre genera of, of weird horseshoe crab things oh that was his trajectory the original Liao founder was politician radical meat, meat seller okay uh, anyway so, uh, the current guy is named Trilobite I can't take him seriously with that fucking name the culture Hergatz Liao is infamous for devising permanent treatments for ailments and selling them at markups that keep them out of reach for most people, all to push poorer customers into temporary treatments or invasive cybernetics instead. Oh no, it's the author waving his shibboleth at the disgusting and horrible pharmaceuticals. And yeah, pharmaceutical companies are nasty. I ain't going to disagree with him on that. I am just pointing out that uh, this just gets tiresome when this is all you've repeatedly been doing is just repeating the same tedious ha talking points. Ampset, is your mic fixed? Are you here or am I still alone in this cosmic void? Do I need to bring do I need to start talking about anamorphs again? Maybe if I talk about Animorphs again, or maybe Star Wars, actually, that might, that might draw him out. Should I talk about Star Wars, Chet? I know I'm clearly trying to avoid talking about this book, but I'm not doing this alone. If it's like Wayland yutani then the other founder line died out. I mean, that's kind of what they hinted at a bit in the weird side spinoffs of all the Alien and Predator stuff. Yeah, Corpo Criticism's not even original, Pagan Pilot, so do, do, do you want me to talk about the Star Wars instead? And, and how it, it is such an exciting and and lively... 
Yeah, it's it's just all surface. Uh, it's all surface critiques. Like, yeah, we know pharmaceuticals are bad. What, what do you have different? Are they are they processing their cures by like capturing and mutilating children from around the world in like their secret black ops labs? Are they doing any virological research to discover ways to weaponize things like that? Like the. Just them marking up prices to make it so that you have to buy augmetics? That's just kind of lame by a comparison. Yeah, it's just kind of ho-hum. It's the Diet Pepsi of, uh... It is the Diet Pepsi of Evil Corporation. I swear Doofenshmirtz could run a better outfit than this fucking lot. Legends or canon Star Wars? Nostalgia or laughing at cringe? I don't know. I, I want to talk about Dave, uh, I want to talk about Dave Filoni's weird obsession with inserting his waifus into everything and destroying the product because he doesn't care about anything like plot or story. Yeah, if you're uh, just a heads up, viewers, um, you can disagree with me, but I'm of the opinion Dave Filoni is a bad writer. Always was a bad writer ever since Avatar season one, and he's only gotten worse since there's no one to rein him in. There is no George Lucas. There is no other writing staff on Avatar. There is no one in his entire corporation in Lucasfilms right now. Oh, you just want me to get on with it? Okay, I'll talk about Cowboy Man later. Maybe we'll do a West End Star Wars game. <laughs> Maybe we'll cover one of the West End Star Wars stuff. That could be fun. Or I could cover Edge of Empires, either way. Uh, let's just get back into this. Oh, hey, it's the Norwegian company that killed a lot of people in this setting. Landveter Orbital. I have no idea what's going on. Impsit, you're here. What happened to your microphone? Did it explode? You might have to set your input ratings. No, I've lost Impsit. He got exploded in the sci-fi of accident. I'm all alone in this universe. <laughs> it's just you and me, chat. Riding on into the, into the sunset. <laughs> oh man so uh yeah lands Vater, these are the people responsible for killing a lot of people in this setting so oh get on uh, get on with it for the author okay oh please do uh i'm just gonna say i i'm, I'm gonna say up front if you're expecting Mandalorian to stay good or to get better from where it is, it's all going to be downhill from there. Because they've pretty much confirmed repeatedly, yeah, it's getting into the sequels. And on top of that, Dave Filoni really wants to show you his Mandalorian OC waifu. Her name's Bo-Katan. And she's been in, like, every other fucking work that he's ever worked on. Because he only uses the same 20 characters. And they're all interconnected in every pile Hello? of fucking gar- There you are! <laughs> I have no idea how it worked, but it does. Is it still popping? No. Thank goodness, let's continue on. I was about to go into a five-hour rant about Dave Filoni, thank you. <laughs> Did Shit, let's move on. <laughs> but I want to talk about his weird, his weird wolf issues, and that his favorite book was written by a guy who should be in prison. We'll do that when we start reviewing Star Wars books. West End? Yeah, okay. Actually, no. West End or Edge of Empires? I played West End. I've, I've, I I've, I've, touched, I've touched Edge of Empires. I have a lot of the West End books, so either or. Well, let, let's review the actual good Star Wars. Hey, West so End. The... Hey, 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 Edge of Empires is pretty good. Pretty good. But yeah, West End has a lot more stuff. So, yeah, Le Lance Vater. Uh, yeah, this killed a lot of people. Uh, if you're wondering, their role is construction maintenance. They built another colony similar to Grand Cross. It exploded and killed how many people? Tens upon tens of thousands of construction workers and residents? I don't know. Turns out, also, they're Nazis. Uh, one second. I'm going to need something a little bit stronger than... Uh... Uh, uh, Landvetir was founded by Berger Gjörngesson, uh, one of the Utsvar Vickerings, 
Uh, these venture Vikings were nationalistic venture capitalists who relied on the mystique and privilege afforded to them by virtue of being Icelandic, white Nordic, to a ruthless degree. Okay, in home here politics. we go. Soul escaping body time. Let's get into how the how the Nazis are going to be always. Ah! I mean, t they're not technically Nazis. It's just they're, they're somehow believing that because they're white, they deserve everything. I'm uh, moving on. Yeah. It's... Morningstar Corporation. I I'm sorry, I can't say anything to that. That that mu that actually pissed me off. <laughs> it li it literally is just we're white, we're the best. Oh god. So Again, Morningstar is Fox News. I... One 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 thing one one thing though about that. How the fuck is this? Uh, corporation working with the African bank. How the fuck does that make any sense? Well, well, you see... Give me a second. I can figure it out. Okay, I got it. So, here's the thing, right? A lot of white nationalists actually have uh, the BBC fetish. I'm not even kidding. Uh... I'm not even kidding. This is a very common thing in white nats and very insecure black supremacists. One uses it as a power fantasy because they're angry at themselves. The other, for some reason, it's the weird mix of self-hatred and thinking I'm saving this woman from this savage because I pay for her things while he rails her. I am not fucking with you. Oh, that so is maybe the that... most common... Oh, God. So the African bank scammed them. No, what happens is the owner of the corporation... What, what's his stupid name? Burger, Burger. Uh Yeah, he, he he lets his wife. Uh, he watches his wife get nailed nailed by the Nigerian man, and and he's in the corner just enjoying it, because he knows at the end of the night that guy goes away, but his wife is his. No matter what, she's covered in white. That's all that matters. <laughs> oh God, I. Uh, actually, no. I imagine this guy actually literally has a white fetish. He's just not, not, not the skin. It's just the color. Everything in his room's white. He wears white face. What? What, what is he? In? He's like a black Norwegian who's just in white face. <laughs> he's, he's like he's, he's Uncle like the Norwegian Uncle Ruckus. <laughs> <laughs> to, to my shame, that my is, grandfather that... was a member of the United of the United Kingdom's Jamaican Rifles Regiment, who was stationed during the defense that of Narvik. <laughs> that asteroid wouldn't have hit the world if it was white. <laughs> to my eternal shame, my grandfather was a black soldier. <laughs> Although I like to think he's actually more Native American. He was a Navajo code talker, and that's all I'm going to say. What do you mean I'm part of the King's ri African Rifles Division? <laughs> Veteran. <laughs> oh, man, my brain. I, I'm actually struggling to, to stay alive. That, oh, God. Now well, let's move on to the corporation. Morning, uh, Fox is, News. Fox News. By Maximilian Fiddler, a European media consultant. Oh, uh, God, fuck him. He's basing him on Rupert Murdoch. Yeah. Uh, wait, 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 hold on. Morningstar is a PR firm, a record company, a television production company, digital newspaper, talent agency, a virtual idol agency, a YouTube production company, and more. Is this stupid mother? We, is this stupid we have, Fox, we have Fox News VTubers. No, I just realized what this is. This stupid asshole made the Meta Liberation Army for My Hero Academia. It even has it even has the supremacists. All it needs is an anime doofenshmirtz, and we're fucking in business, man. Because you have the telecommunications company, you have the engineering and support company, and now you have the media conglomerate. And they're following an ancient ideology as expressed by by other people, and fulfilling a dream. To fix the world in their image. 
All it needs is fucking anime doof and schmertz, and we're in, and we're in business. Let's see if they actually have an anime company coming up. Uh, oh, let's see if they have a telecommunications company because one of the other big elements was uh, there was a company run by them that was that. It kind of, but that's later. Look, I, I'm just trying to find anything, anything, because I am actually in pain right now. I am we move? in emotional pain. Why don't we move on to nanofuturistics, agritech, hydroponics, data harvesting, pharmaceuticals, and urban greening. So it's your ag core. Yeah, but with uh, but they like steal your data. Um, they actually have competition. They struggle to secure territory in the agricultural ring thanks to a rival named Farmclave. Farmclave. So, um. Uh, in our need, farm cl farm clave in exchange for cartel membership and shares in the company. So, it seems like Nan Futuristic actually was trying to enter into the cart, enter into the business, without going with the cartel. God, I wish Anime Doof and Smirch punched me out of the 90th floor of his evil incorporated building. But the punchinator. Oh, no, no. Anime Doofenshmirtz, he doesn't need no punchinator. He used the glow up inator to gain super strength based on his anxiety. Uh, they're an environmentally friendly company that... Uh, I'm having... I'm, not... I'm sorry, guys. I just... My brain is struggling. Oh, oh, this is... this. I remember this line in the culture. Um, so that you can feel like you're doing your part not to think, say, about the fact that most greenhouse gas emissions come from around 100 companies, just 20 are responsible for more than a third, and the people who run those companies have names and addresses. Which, I love the, the subtle implication there. So, here's the thing. We are not the most moral people in the universe. We can be seen as horrible people. I casually talked about foot tacos earlier in the stream. And I talked about... We talked about a lot of interesting things, right? Over the years. Um, You know, it's not often that I read a book that actually kind of low-key threatens people. Just for working for a corporation. Or well, no, it says the pe people who running. run, you know. Because you, yeah, know, you know, technically perhaps that's a perhaps that's a type threatening of, or yeah, that that technically could actually be violating the First Amendment. There's not many things that uh, can be violating for uh, freedom of speech, but something like that could technically be uh, argued. I mean, maybe in Austra Australia, because oh, oh yeah, Westminster have. is the far but, shittier place. But um, no, just saying that if he had specifically named, oh by the way, there's this person, here's this address, and when you read it's this, close. go ahead and do this. It's you close. have to be he's very pulling specific. A, he's pulling a movie Bob here. Which movie Bob also, also just came short, usually, of doing shit like that. But also, what do you, is the implication what? That if you remove them, somehow they'll stop? Well, well to, again, you use that anime I brought up. Uh, there was another bad guy who believed that, yeah, yeah, if you got rid of people like that, things would get better. Because it'd terrify but, the other people into doing better. Dog whistling to Antifa readers. We see this from a lot of ilk. Yeah. Their messaging. It's like, fight the power, but fight essentially the power, they're just advocating, are advocating the for and subtly advocating for terrorism. And they're also usually puppets of the, corpora of the corporations they pretend to be against. No, seriously, a lot of... Um, the old left organizations used to actually be against conglomerates and shit like this. Nine times out of ten, they're not that anymore. Like, yeah, they'll complain about it, but they're too busy. They're too busy relying on tech companies to kind of do whatever they want. Isn't it a bit interesting the moment some South African guy owned a toilet thought website? Their opinions yo-yoed 180 degrees. Isn't that weird? Within the span of a week. Because it wasn't... they. Oh, wasn't don't get me wrong. Them. South African Blood Diamond Man is running the company into the ground like a fucking meteorite. Let's, let's be honest there, but it's a bit weird, isn't it? Look, I'm sorry I'm acting like I, I, I'm all over the place mentally. This book hurts sometimes. 
Especially I mean, so when the author book, gets on book. their soapbox. Oh hey, Ogremok, you'll remember them. Uh, uh, to our to our K fans, to our to our gun nut friends, to our Miltech spans fans. God, uh, help me. They're apparent. They're apparently an industrial uh, giant. But they also make uh, firearms. And remember, the, this guy is so not used to firearms. He thinks that you can design a fire. Oh, design them, in the point of view of being able to fit in different calibers casually into them. Because you know, if you if you uh, you know I mean, try shoving, a, let's try shoving a thirty. Uh, let's try shoving a forty-four caliber bullet into a three-five-seven. I mean, a gun what do you fires mean it bullet. Fit? A gun fires bullets. That means if it's a bullet, it should fit. By the way, you shouldn't use pew pews in, in this game because they're bad. If you shoot, you bad. I mean, also because pressure. One shot through a glass he window didn't think and. Of that at all. Everyone's organs are out of their bodies. You know, actually, this reminds me of a really stu. Okay, uh, off topic because my brain is desperate. It's so desperate, Imset. So I, I way back when a uh, sci-fi setting I came up with, uh, there was a uh, one of the planets that was part uh, involved essentially a low-scale civil war, uh, essentially United Earth, uh, United Earth system, which owned a good chunk of the solar system, fell apart. Right. And one of the planets, uh, one of the, well, not planets, but one of the moons of Saturn, actually Titan, was being slowly, essentially used as a mining station. But because of the way you can't really casually terraform it, uh, yeah, any atmosphere breach and the, you're fucked. You're fucked, just straight up. So uh, you want to know the firearms and, and weaponry that they used in uh, on Titan? They went back uh, to crossbows. What? Mainly because hmm. it had less uh, draw strength and it was far less likely to punch through uh, any, say, windows or any hulls. Well, I mean, Dune kind of did the same thing. Yeah, they went back to shit like crossbows and they, and they used stuff like knives. Not not because they de de degenerated fully tech-wise. I mean, to a limited degree they did, just because of la uh, lacking imports. But no, they can, they can make guns, it's just... If you fire, if you fire out there, you might let you might cause an atmosphere breach. So you stuck, you know, you stuck with melee weapons, uh, you stuck with close quarters fighting, and you stuck with low velocity weaponry. Interesting. Yeah, oh. I, that's what I, th I, I had to bring it. Up. I'm sorry. It's just each corporation has been digging into my brain like a rusty knife. No, oh, don't worry. We're hopefully getting through it. Um. Ogremok, uh, apparently a merger of old European industrial corporations uh, failed or privatized the EU solar energy program. Uh, the problem is a lot of those European industrial corporations are, have already been absorbed. Like, uh, for example, British the British steel industry, it was already absorbed by Tata by that point. Uh, Tata, is Indi Tata is India's largest steel industrial conglomerate. It's kind of ironic, isn't it? Yep. Um, uh, heavily invested in Space Rush, the solar system was full of resources, and when you measured its value, not in how many people it could support, but in how much money you could make, because, you know, that... Speculative bubble. It would, make maybe, but it would make more sense, maybe, if the company was failing before then. But also for the fact that, yeah, you can you can measure things in money. But there's also a thing called you have to build, you have to spend money to get there. Well, I mean, they're they were EU industrial corporations. They have like a bajillion dollars already. Even though it, it didn't 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 they get yeetiored by the meteor? But they have, but they're <laughs> corporations. They have all the money. But they got pasta la vista by the asteroidista. Money can make that go away. Ravioli, ravioli, show me the extinctioli event. Um, let's see, uh, Ogremok had a lot of competition. Uh, so again, competition. Yeah, and, and uh, fiddlingly from uh, wasn't Shackleton an Australian guy who went to like the North Pole or no South Pole? Let me look that up. I forgot. Shackleton, Australian. Anglo-Irish Antarctic explorer. Ah, I was not 
cl I was not quite close. Commonwealth, though. I was right on that. Um, assets. Actually, in, in this nightmare future, what... Oh, you know what would be a fun nightmare future idea? The colonization and terraforming of Antarctica. Come on, doesn't that sound neat? Yep. Actually, no, it does sound... I mean, there's a lot of land down there. Like, yeah. a lot. Yeah? Who and knows, you can, and you can even have them there. be like, screw global warming, this is for the benefit of humanity. Accidentally causes a, a Devonian level... No, it was an Ordovician level extinction event because of the anoxic oceans they created. Oh, fuck! You can tell I uh, really am trying to avoid talking about this book. And I'm going to try to power through it. Um, Ogremark is old school, does what it answers did in the 80s and 90s whenever possible. They still have paper. Have 80s and 90s. Okay, and here. Apple twos. Apple t They would... Apple... Apple twos are actually not commonly used in corporations. Not that this dumbass would know. Some of the boxes gotten hold of fax machines. The fuck... Okay, so I'm going to have to break... Let me break this down because there's a lot to unpack here. So the concept is Ogremach is supposedly an extremely conservative and withdrawn sort of company. Old-fashioned. Okay. The problem is their ancestors did in the 80s and 90s. This is in 2020. Keep that in mind. Yeah, it's a time ago. It's a good time ago. It is outdated. I won't disagree with you, but... The way they're acting like it, we're, it's like we're talking about the 1950s or 60s, you know? Are they so old school that they decide, fuck it, we're not using electricity, we're working by candlelight? They, they would still have paper-heavy offices, which, hey, paper is still a very disposable asset. You would probably, if you're in space, though, be using terminals. Apple IIs, though, were never used in any serious degree by offices. It was it was used mainly by creative suits. It was often used in marketing, and it was also often used in design and detailing in artistic studios. Mainly because at the time Apple actually had a far superior in terms of in terms of art assets. You know, its programs were more elaborate and more detailed for that front. But if we if you're talking like old fashioned companies. No, motherfucker. It's international business business machines and then and then Windows software stuff. Like we're talking Dell after IBM bit the bullet. You can kind of tell this guy never really paid attention to the actual office of the 80s and 90s. This guy just get everything from Office Space. No, even Office Space they used I, they, they used IBM machines and, as well as Dells. Apple II's were not very. Uh, Apple II's were Apple were Macintosh's most successful device at the time, uh, but it's kind of the equivalent of the Sega Genesis in America. You know, kind of a fluke. Mainly because of a combination of price, the fact that well, parts distributions was a lot lower. You can't really repair it yourself, and, and it just kind of has a niche value. Don't get me wrong, an Apple II is fine. Like in terms of the computers of its time, it's really good. Like it was a good machine. It kicked ass. It beat the shit out of IBM. But when it comes to scaling and what you need to do, honestly, you could just fucking get an IBM machine or any cheap thing. Hell, you could probably get away with Atari computers because they were actually used by... Uh, Atari used to actually make their own business computers. Basically, they, uh, they they would use them to make their own equivalent of like the family computer as well. Uh, in Europe, it'd be like your Z, uh, ZX Spectrums and, and shit like that. Uh, all I'm saying I mean, I, is that I get what they're talking about. They're supposed to be staid, conservative, and kind of out of touch. They still use rows of cubicles, which, by the way, cubicles were obsolete even in the 80s. Uh, by that point, they were uh, by that point, a lot of corporations were moving to open office plans. Which, if, which, you know, fun fact, open office plans are actually somehow more inefficient than cubicles. <laughs> For some reason, it just, like, it drives worker productivity even lower. And not because people want to talk, but it's, like, it's even more awkward and, and soul-crushing. <laughs> Rounds of layoffs, Android exploitation, and the glass ceiling. Ah, yes, the good old glass ceiling. Uh, I want to throw this toothpick at you.
Author, I wish to throw this toothpick at you. Also, fax machines. What, what, what are they? A Japanese business? Because that's the thing. That's something you'd see in a Japanese corporation. They're the ones still obsessed with fax machines at this point. Even then, and even then, they're they're going in the way of the dodo there. Yeah, I I don't. This entire company's run on stupid. They want to set price controls. Omni Consumer Product slash uh, Cyberdyne Systems. It, it's 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 Omni Core. It's OCP or Cyberdyne. It, it, it's it is literally just that. It's actually both of them at once. So so watch watch RoboCop and that's he, this. He is a robot. He is a cop. Oh fuck, he's not a robot. I'm just I'm just envisioning him kicking down the door. Where's my wife? And like, I don't know, threatening OCP. How dare you, how dare you divorce, make her divorce. What? No, death to us part. I'm Catholic. I mean, he's dead. Murph, Murph, fun fact, Murphy is Catholic. And that's actually, um, in the second movie, the psychologist, uh, the, the crank psychologist that suggested the crazy drug cult leader actually brought up that that might be why Murphy didn't kill himself. Mm. Because, uh, because he was Catholic even though he was in horrendous pain from being brought back as a horrible mutilated cyborg, because suicide was a sin, he, he refused to do it. Actually, one other thing. Director four. He yeah. can't harm an officer of the company. Don't worry, Dick. You're fired. The company? You're fi you're no, fi but is it, isn't RoboCop a part of the company? Robert Cop, you're fired. <laughs> and he just shoots himself in the head. Like the one guy in the second film. <laughs> or he just rips his head off like the other one. <laughs> oh man. So uh, let, let, uh, just a little bit, yeah. Omnidyne started as a robotics company. Um, they tried to crack artificial intelligence and makes trillions. They weren't even close. However, their failed attempts taught them a lot about a regular a regular AI. They wound up designing drones. So they're a little bit of the Terminator Three plot. The problem is they actually did come up with robots. Remember the dreamers? Like sentient AI. Like you can't make fun of not having AI, but then also have it, you know? I mean, it didn't work the way they wanted to. Sure, but I'm just... Uh... Move on to the social media corporation? Uh... Yeah. Pulsar. Yeah. It rivals Heo Cities. Oh, God. You're to learn that how Round Earth is a Russian psyop. Which, how are the Russians still around? So. Oh, oh, oh no, no, no. Here, you want to get this one? Earlier success came from its investor, Endymion Lucky. Get it? Get it? No. It's Palmer. Oh. That artistic guy who's into VR. Oh, God. Oh, uh, no, you forgot the best part. Author cunt notes. Cunt notes. <laughs> I'm just going to call him cunt into notes. The... We're not getting into the details of Pulsar's appearance and features, so you can just assume it works however you need it to. Okay, that's actually not dickish. Sorry, it's just usually when the author puts little notes like that, it's usually like him at his most, you know, bitter and awful and cuntish, as I should say. By the way, I'm, I'm using that word a lot. Don't worry, guys. He's Australian. It's a very different uh, way of saying it. Uh -uh. Pulsar was based on the code of an earlier site he made in college for amateur erotic sci-fi authors. Oh, that's a slight nod. This is, like, supposed to be making fun of Facebook, I think. Wait, really? Well, think no, about I mean, it. The, 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 the no, I get, I get that. No, I'm, I'm the code thing. 
Oh, well, because Facebook started life, it was supposed to be a college communication network system. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, as I'm reading it, yeah, this is clearly based on Facebook. Yeah, and, and that would explain the stupid conspiracies, but honestly, social media was a mistake. Like, all forms of it was a mistake. So, it's assets in its network, tech company, future, casual, the perks are many, and often not necessary, and the job security is MIA. Park gets people as pilgrim, he does his best to make Pulsar a great place to work, he's also deeply, sometimes baffling... Spiritual man. So that's the that's the Twitter half. The found the founder is based on the Twitter guy who remember he also was like a weird hippie. And uh, standard tech company culture environments casual. So uh, here here's the thing about tech companies that a lot of people don't really notice. Nine times out of ten, those perks are just there to disguise the fact that you're basically getting ground to the bone. You know, it's the bread and circuses, so you don't just immediately fling yourself out of the skylight. That's what the nets are for. Yeah. Now, now, admittedly, the conditions are still better than at evil corporation. I mean, Amazon. But, uh, no, like, they expect you to work ridiculous hours, unless unless you're one of the, you know, you know what one of the more fun, and by fun, I mean, uh, you ever watch those days in the life of, like, a social media executive, or, like, social media employee, and it's, like, some lady going through uh, their day, and they basically only work for, like, three hours out of eight? It's, like, two yeah. and a half hours, and it's, like, most of her day is spent discussing lunch, or, like, I don't know, vlogging or whatever. <laughs> like, I, I decided to have my, I decided to have my, my quinoa, you know, like my quinoa rice and, and wild chicken with sesame seed, you know, with sesame seed sauce for, for lunch. And after having an hour and a half long lunch, I decided to telemarket and talk to the, uh, talk to my employee staff. And, and then after that, I just had to do this, you know, do a little bit of paperwork and then I went home and it just feels like it's only what, three hours, of, maybe two hours of work, maybe three in an eight hour work period. By the way, a lot of them are getting fired recently uh, due to the tech crunch. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, it's just I, I, I'm pointing out these things because these are like your, you know, your bog standard corporate parodies. You know, there's not much to say about them. It's like ripping teeth trying to get through this. For me, for you, that, it's it's easier. Yeah, that and honestly, every time we review these, they are becoming more and more outdated as a reference. Yeah, it's like, again, almost the, like you need timelessness to really make it work. Like, I mean, you want to bank corporate exploitation, that sort of stuff. That, that'll be timeless. The Asano Corporation is still timeless because yeah. the whole family business usually does turn into a toxic situation where, like, who gets the inheritance? In that case, it's literally the son who pissed off the father the least. Or, like, who is seen as the least disappointing. And all the other ones, like, their relations are burned. That that has some timeless element to it. Notice that I actually liked that one the most out of all the ones we've read. Oh, next one, Tetsuo. Kaneda! Um, Sorry, Consumer Electronics, Acura. Cybernetics, Robotics, Media, and Video Games. So... Honestly, is this a Nintendo? I think it's this Bing Bing Wahoo. Um, uh, let's. See. I'm um, just doing a really quick skimming. Uh, yeah, yeah, it kind of looks and, like Androids. It's, uh, it's a lot of Android stuff. And video games, so it's like a, it's like Nintendo. Oh yeah, didn't they make that fucking batshit console? That they showed a few pages back. Yeah, they did. I still want the exploding guns to be cartel conspiracy to force people to buy invasive cybernetics after hands are blown off. That'd be funny from Pagan Pilot. That, yeah, that actually. That would be, would be fun. Good. 
Zenovi then... Ultra Graphics. These also build guns, and they're like the 3D printing people. And honestly, Russian. I'm wondering Russian. which. What are they parodying with this? Morozov's code was good, but he didn't have much success until the early years of the research boom. With its own anti. Is this Kaspersky? I think it's Kaspersky. And they decided to do software for orbit, including accessible astronomy tools, an updated version of the science kit. It was the cho it was the tool of choice for. He basically made the equivalent of Microsoft Office. Oh, they acquired Heo Cities. Uh. By the way, their software. Okay. Um. The thing about Russia is it's more known for its brain dream than it is known for its uh, scientists. Because why, why live in Moscow for $14,000 a year, which is less than what you'd get working at a McDonald's in Brooklyn? I'm, I'm not even fucking with you. You could work 20 hours at a McDonald's in, like, New York, and you'd still make more money than an engineer in Moscow. And you'd have more disposable income, too. <sighs> and this one's just kind of boring. I, I don't really have much to say, so let's just kind of quickly move on. Other corporations, Apevert, a Turing-based guerrilla marketing firm. They make Pepsi ads. What? Pepsi. It lo la the last, second to last word of that paragraph. B P S Pepsi. It sounds, it sounds like an Indian trying to pronounce Pepsi. Okay, so uh, l let me tell you about why Disney is going to financially collapse soon, since they're already cutting... See, I I'm just joking. Uh, oh, no, I wish. Well, think about it like... Uh, just a very quick side note. They're cutting out They're cutting out budget for CGI effects. That's why Ant-Man 3 looked like shit, and that's why The Little Mermaid looks like shit. That's fucking telling. They're not even finishing the CGI effects for that shit now. They're just what what's going to happen is they're going to keep desperately trying to slam home runs or stuff that'll make it on D+ cuz that's what they're trying to sell. Eventually they something's going to break. Canopus Cyber. Canopus is a lunar and cybernetics corporation that helps workers heal from accidents. So basically this is where you go if you want your robo arms. Ouroboros Cyber SA business. Oh no no, there's probable. more. They bribe know, companies yeah. to make this happen. They bribe oh, companies so they, actually... so they got so they were sent people to bill. And they would also intentionally chop off more bits so that they can charge them more. Like, oh, you know, he lost his hand and wrist and like the lower half of his arm. Well we'll just say it got up to the elbow, chop it off from there and he has to like pay more for the prosthetic. I wonder where they take the body parts, then. Well, you see, they sell it to the restaurants. Waste I not, want not. It... Yeah. Either they give it to that cannibal guard as payment. They give it to the cannibal guard of Goliath, yeah. He's, like, gnaw he's like gnawing on a femur. <laughs> Cross guard! Oh, all cops. All of them. Uh... The premier independent private security, they're even more authoritarian than Goliath, though they do see a sharp decrease in crime, random invasions of privacy, brutal crackdowns for minor infractions, um, justice and sorts of plot. Rather, they focus on crime prevention and the enforcement of order. So they premature. So they do. Uh, what's the name of that movie where they use a dude who sees in the future to kill people who are about to commit crimes? Priority Report. Oh, uh, yes. Minority Report. Minority Report, which, uh, also fun fact, was used in the shitty as hell, in the god-awful Civil War II Marvel boogaloo in the comics. I'm not even kidding. Civil War II is basically the plot of Minority Report, but you don't like any of the sides. Uh, all, I do, all I do know is all cops, according to this piece of shit author. Look, I don't, I don't know how bad the Australian police are. And I know, like, like, let's be fair. The Metro Police in the United Kingdom, 
horrible people. Horrible people. At least their, their, their original manager, like a couple years ago, horrible person. But after a certain point, you just kind of, in, in your head, just... Because uh, you know that this is the same person that would immediately call the police and panic the moment society began breaking down. Like, it's that, you know, it's that inner hypocrisy that I just, it just, it makes me want to go to a Capellan re-education center. I may not survive the process to become a better citizen, but it'd be worth it. Outdoor Boris Cyber SA Business, probably. So it's a, it's a shell. It, is it a shell? Yeah, it's is a, it shell a shell company. Shell? It has to be. Uh, it basically, most... it's just used for like corporate schemes. River. Rare. It's ba it's based on. Oh. oh, it's based on. No, no, never mind. It's the first. It could be the first quintuple A industry out there. <laughs> so this is him complaining about the conditions of the working conditions in the ele in the video game industry. I mean, I'll give him credit. That's pointing out something people forget about because the video game industry is a fucking nightmare to work in. I mean, people talk about it now, but like, you know, you don't really see that in sci-fi too often, you know, dystopian cyberpunk sort of shit. I mean, usually instead what you see is like video game companies are usually the play things of like psychopathic man-child, you know? You know, you don't just see standard corporate grind. So I, I, all I can take from this, this guy watches or at least watched Jim Sterling when he was writing this. Either watch Jim Sterling or just standard bread tubers, I think. I mean, is there a difference at this point? Uh, standard bread tubers don't show themselves in horrible wrestling. And then complain that it's actually the fact they transition that's why people stop watching. Rather than, no one wants to see you fucking wrestle. Space Banshee! It's a music thing. Starry Destination Records, another music thing. My guess is they're based on stuff. Uh, it seems Space Banshee just generic music um the starry destination uh it's like it's you know, musician it's streamers vir virtual idols especially like transmedia acts that cover multiple platforms so yeah tofu canon science education it runs educational facilities to teach kids about space so actually good like yep. the only thing I can see bad from this is apparently they try to do corporate memes when they're minding your own business and they eat you with the food cannon. If you're thinking memes aren't funny when you're just explaining them, congratulations. You thought about this harder than I I'm not thinking at all. Oh, thank fuck. Someone else is writing. True cross, True cross clinic vital science. Someone else is writing. Maybe this will be actually. Oh wait, better. wait. No, this is this is another. I had this issue in the beginning. It's True Cross Clinic. And then there's another company called Vital Science. Just yeah. the way they split it is bad, but it's good. a different writer. Maybe it's better. True uh, Cross True... bills itself as. An... Oh, sorry. So, yeah, I was. I was reading True. Oh, isn't that an insurance company in the U.S.? Uh, probably. This is going to almost certainly be uh, an insult to the way the U.S. handles its health care, which yeah. I'll be, yeah, it's garbage. The way we handle health care uh, is fucking garbage, but uh, pick your flavor um, of fucking garbage. The U.K.'s own system is about to eat shit and die, too. And it is. It's all getting funneled to emergency, and that's running out, too. Oh boy, this great book. Yeah, Squirrel Killer. Uh, I, I have been experienced. Uh, basically, this stream could also be titled Impsit Drags Adam Unwillingly Like a Tantruming Child Through the Book for the Next Three Hours. We need to get through this. I don't wanna! <laughs> I don't wanna! <laughs>
But uh, yeah, True Cross is uh, an alternative to private health industry. Today, they're a wealthy and powerful corporation with a monopoly on the alternative medical industry, which we call quackery. Uh, they provided practical treatments for injuries, especially for station workers, setting bones, constructing split. So they started life essentially as a street doc. And now they run their own multi-level marketing scheme. Which, by the way, most, uh, most, most, you know, health clinics don't do that. Multi, imagine a pyramid scheme based on health. There, there is, there is stuff like that. The closest I can think of is Primerica, I think, if I remember right. They also, uh, I think they mostly do insurance, though. But, the, but there are, like, bullshit health things that are run, like, marketing schemes. Young Living, although they usually use woo-woo oil. It's, it, it's more common for stuff that, uh. You know, you can usually grind together and put in a bottle. Like, you know, crap weight loss supplements, uh, crap health stuff. You don't usually you oh, don't I usually run run in like hospitals like a multi level marketing scam. Like that's a bit wrong. If they did it instead, like oh yeah, they run medicine. Or or like they, they run multi level oh I got it. Multi level marketing cybernetics. <laughs> where they have this you know they have midline because here's the thing with uh, with multi-level marketing and pyramid schemes and, and direct marketing at the end of the day the products that you usually get from them are at least middling <laughs> sometimes they cause damage like uh essential oils as a habit uh don't fucking eat them but if you put them in like an you know an incense to human you know, incense humidifier it works so imagine like you get this is how you can get your cybernetics you sign up and spent several thousand dollars to to get your robo arm, and you also have to sell all the other robo arms, or you could because you're not going to make enough money really by selling the robo arms, or you could invite eight friends. You can invite eight friends to be your marketing team to to ensure that everyone has the ability to get back to work. We br we br we revive life. We bring you back life, a true cross clinic. Little Jimmy here used to be a quadriplegic after the accident with the evil Norse Nazi people who blew up that space station on accident. Little Jimmy is now able to sort glass. Because while we couldn't fix his brain, we gave him both arms and legs. And, and little Jimmy's own friends at the school also have arms and legs because they are all survivors. And, like, they're picking on, on, on people who are injured at work or, like, who survived horrible disasters. Like, oh, you lost your legs and your child in the aftermath of, like, an explosion at a spaceport? Well, don't worry, friend. We'll make sure you get back your autonomy with our patented robo-legs. Just make sure, and also you can bring in your friends. Come on, it's gonna be great. We'll bring you community back, and you can Key maybe put to rest your dead child. <laughs> Come on, can't you envision like a, a like that type of scam, <laughs> modern, in a sci-fi setting? Yeah. <laughs> oh man, but uh, yeah, True Cross basically it started life as like a genuine uh essentially kind of a third uh, developing world style clinic where it's essentially we have people on staff that can do the basics. Like, like if you were about to die or you have broken bones, we can fix that. MLMs work through a funnel up system. Well, yeah, that's why they massively overcharge you on the, on the cybernetics. And, th and then just like establish a cult based around it too. Like, you know, a community cult. But uh, yeah, basically, they started as a real clinic, they got a lot of money, and they kind of lost their roots, for what it looks like. Especially since they've been rebranded as a boutique chemist. So I, maybe that's where they become the multi-level marketing scam. They started life as like, oh yeah, I was out in the streets helping people and preventing people from dying horribly in the gang wars of, of Grand Cross, or in the fiery wastes of the Northern Hemisphere. But now you could buy now you could buy our essential oils packet that uses genomic sequencing that allows you to actually experience a euphoric feeling as you regenerate at 1.5 times the normal time. It also cures dysentery, gonorrhea, and cancer. 
And if that's not good enough for you, don't worry. We have our health food supplements using the cold-pressed juicer that you can get for $585. Ignore that you can get an equivalent packet at $100 in any other marketing firm. But come on, feel free to join the family and ensure that everyone gets as healthy and as clean living as you can in space. Free your souls from gravity. Join the club. And he just shows the pyramid. Like a pyramid logo. Do you work in marketing, actually? Um, no, I don't, actually. I have experience with it, though. Yeah. I, I do have some minor experience with it, though. Mainly because I, I worked with other people that, like, tried to... I, I, I actually tried to, like, aid on a commercial or two, but no. Like, I don't have any actual official training in selling bullshit. Which sci-fi... I, I just talk setting? a lot. Yeah. But Squirrel's saying, which sci-fi cyberpunk setting was it where they had a corporal mar you know, marketing HRT company that basically did that? Hormone replacement therapy company that basically did that? Man, I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, there might be a Brazilian one. That may be where it is. I don't know. There's vital science in software and industrial tech. And a company working on machines and software for Martian settlements... They've been kept out of the cartel because Omnidyne considers them a competitor, but they supply a few members with industrial tech. It's a singularist symp sympathizer who hopes to establish a science town on Mars. They, they want to build the robot god. They... <laughs> the tell oh no, the blade. robot death squads are coming. Oh oh no, it's just an asshole who decided to race down his road at like 80 miles an hour in his, in his tiny pee, pee truck. Every now and again, you know those people that try to remove their mufflers to, you know, prove that they don't got the tiny pee-pee? Every now and again, you can just hear them roar. Yeah, that happened, sorry. Do they go into details about Mars' problems? 38% Earth gravity, yeah. Sub-zero temp, lack of surface water, wafer-thin atmosphere, lower pressure. And a sandbox game's creative mode. I am not a fan of the way that was written, but it's still better than what the fuck I previously read. Um, it also is, is it also is completely accurate. The the other the thing with this this is interesting is because of the fact that they're not part of the cartel, but they are used by the cartel. I, I could see this being very interesting in a narrative of a corporate war. Well, yeah, wouldn't it have been interesting if the cartel is rapidly trying to buy up other corporations, and that's like an actual scheme of theirs? Or... And actually, wouldn't they're... that make a lot of sense? Like, they're buying all the corporations on Grand Cross. Or rather, that because they've accumulated this much power now, one is trying to dominate the rest. That could be interesting. But, but my thinking is, there's a bunch of corporations that, that have set up business in space, but then there's this like insidious conspiracy known as the cartel. It's only it's like seen as a boogeyman thing, except in the underworld, where their whole thing is they, they have maybe they're like some weird uh, some weird political group, or maybe they're just particularly you know those type of rich people who would, would happily run a country if they could get their ability to just kind of do it like from the shadows. That sort of thing, where they're like trying to organize and seize control of this station because if they essentially control the ins and outs they control the people and they also control the gateway out of the earth like what are you going to do build another space station that costs billions of dollars and you're not getting income flow from the a near asteroid belt that you're mining you're not get you're not getting communications from earth or from the moon or mars that that would be a very interesting conspiracy. Like, like it's a corporate conspiracy, essentially trying to maybe establish their own, bi like almost like a, like a, like a plutocracy. Essentially, slowly take control of the company uh, of the station by taking over its critical life systems, infrastructure, and all this stuff. Then take over completely, declare independence, and then say, "What are you gonna do? Bombard this fucking place? We have your industry by the balls." 
because by this point earth has kind of focused its industry you know its industrial resource gathering from space they need grand cross to process ore to be directed down to earth if they lose that they're fucked By the way, this is Adam's brain writhing in agony and, and not seriously thinking because pain. And these are ideas that come in his mind. These are things that could have happened in this book. And it could have maybe... I, I think you might have found that interesting. Like, uh, you know, their their whole thing is they actually want to set up a shadow government. And the heroes are waging that secret war to undermine them. Yeah, because uh, and, and like the and it's not just like a shadow girl. These people are surprisingly powerful, and there's people that they have on employment, or they're actually part of the conspiracy you wouldn't fucking expect. Like you know that you know that like the VTuber who a kid who kind of like joins and pals around with those socialist friends of hers. Yeah, she's in on it. Her whole goal is to suborn and find people uh, find people and redirect them against targets that are not owned by them. Oh, the the charitable the charitable owner of thirty eight different takeout restaurants. Yeah, he's part of the conspiracy too. His whole purpose is to appeal to the is appealing entirely to his ethnic tribal group because he has a lot of connections from there, from his homeland in say Africa. Oh, this uh th this charitable fellow who who uh, uh, no no oh this greedy guy yeah he's in it too. He's one of the main money makers. <laughs> The guy, the guy that running this health clinic here, part of it. Or then you find out that the actual like corporate, not all like, the corporate the, guys, like yeah, like some of them, the ones you would think would be in the conspiracy, they're not, because the they realize these people are so greedy, they'll sell their own mother, but they're also not smart enough to do it without everyone noticing. And you can even do like a, an insidious thing where it's like they, they're trying to indoctrinate children. Like they're starting to get control over education boards. Oh. Like this an is actual. Too good. Let's... Well, okay, to be fair, do, do you want to know where I came up with this from? I'm assuming real world? Partially that. Partially that. But it's also just if you're gonna run a conspiracy, you got you gotta think through the box like how can you make this conspiracy expand and, and become a genuine threat? Oh, and one of the and again one of the best ones is you you also have to kind of own and guide the opposition. Oh, like I said, oh yeah, you know that you know one of you know some of those contacts, yeah, they're actually in on it. That anti-corporate blog is actually owned by, is actually run as a shell by, like, one of the other conspiracies. We just run AI through it. And, and the reason why is because it's not that hard to redirect rage against other corporations. So many of them exploit their people worse than we do. And, and even then, they, like, openly say, oh, yeah, some of our work conditions ain't nice, but, like, you can make fun. You can make fun of, say, I don't know, Asano Industries, but at the end of the day, they at least have a reliable paycheck. It's not like Garians, where you don't know if you're going to be fired or not because they're hemorrhaging money trying to run a train network. It's not. It's not hard to raise ire against them. Who knows? Maybe we can buy them and actually make the railroads run on time. And then is... in the and then in the event that in the event that people begin protesting. We shut down and demolish it so they can't escape. This is getting to be too good. We need to continue with this. <laughs> it's almost it's almost like I'm it's almost like I, I have ideas that 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 could be good. I don't know. I, I think it's because my brain is so desperate. It, it, it's like uh you know how sometimes if you get tortured you start disassociating and start not paying attention? Yep. Anyway, here's the corporate characters. Here's the why are you gay banker. It, there was something in this in his appearance 
it says people think he wears the same suit to work every day, but he just has seven identical suits. So this guy only owns seven suits. I don't know why the hell people make fun of that. Albert Einstein did the same fucking thing. I'm not even kidding. I have... One of the things he did was he he uh, he didn't have seven, but like what he did was why why bother thinking about what I'm gonna wear when for the most part it's just gonna be the same thing. So he just got a few I mean, yeah, of the makes, same things. Makes makes a lot of sense. Why waste time doing that when I could be using it to I don't know plow women, discover physics, uh you know work at my patent office. Why why bother with that? I, like that's time. I I don't got time for that. I got to figure out relative mechanics and I got to tap that ass. Cause that's another thing. Einstein was a bit of a womanizer. Didn't he also go for his cousin? Well, yes. Also, no, Einstein was not a dummy in school. He actually was well accomplished. I think he did have quite a few reprimands under his belt because he was also kind of a little shit as a kid. But uh, anyway, yeah. Why are you gay, man? Uh, he he uh, he wears the same seven suits. Uh, Tadashi Asano. That's the current um, heir uh, and the current leader. He actually apparently has a beard, a full beard, which is pretty interesting. He doesn't care much for other people beyond what they can do for him, except for his children and maybe his wife. Well, remember, his father also was an asshole who openly disinherited one of his children because she reminded him of his wife, his mother, too much. Like shitty father, like shitty son. And Goro Sano. Um... Also, he has to tighten his grip on his company. How the fuck did he manage to lose different parts of the branch? Or was it his father being like, all right, let's, uh, to prevent fighting, I'll, I'll split apart the different corporations. Like, you're all heads of these ones, each and every one. You know, despite him not realizing what feudalism is. Um, I think this might actually be the author's attempt to make the Zabi family from Universal Century's Gundam. No, it just reminded me of times playing Crusader Kings and... It's a bit of that, but, like, it having also... And murdering my, you know, fellow siblings to get their titles. But this also kind of reminds me of the of the Principality of Zeon under the Zobbies, because they kind of did that. Uh, Giren, uh, basically, the, his father... The father, Dagwin, stepped back. Giren took command. And his siblings each had their own authority. Uh, Giren's uh, other brother, uh, Dazzle... He commanded the military forces. Uh, his sister, Kaiselia ran the intelligence agency and research development process. And Garma was starting to be, uh, was sent as the commander of the Earth Invasion Force. And eventually would have become governor. You know, if his best friend didn't intentionally set him up to die. They had another brother that uh, that they mentioned a little bit. But he, he got assassinated earlier. He he was the original spy master, and Kaiselia originally was the research specialist. So anyway, uh, Tadashi's third son is the CEO of Toha Cyber Holdings. He was practically disowned for turning down a political marriage and screwing up his father's plans. It's that that that's very much a stereotypical anime plot of super rich families politically marry. It's a thing that happens still, but I don't know. Like I've seen it before, and it kind of gets boring, you know. Also, is uh, he married? He married. He married a coworker. That's never a good thing. Oh, he's an oh, he's one of the Amazon chasers. G Goro's the type of person who loves his ladies, uh, loves his ladies, uh, to be able to bench press him, or crush his head to crush his head into paste with their thighs. Sorry, I just had to point that out. Uh, that's about the only thing I can think of. Uh, Trip Briggs, Gary and CEO, one of the founders but of Gear. Hmm? He said he got cybernetic cancer with carpal tunnel. He went with the synthetic skin, but he got LED strips built to his wrists to match his PC accessories. Oh, 
God, that just sounds awful. <laughs> is it bad? I kind of. Is it bad? I kind of find that like almost amusing rather than cringe. It is, but how do you turn them off? That's the point. He doesn't. He, he doesn't. He's a man child. He's a man child. <laughs> He literally is a fucking man. He's just a big fucking man child. Oh, come on. I, I actually don't hate this guy. I mean, he is... The problem is he is... bulldozing his company to the ground. I mean, uh, here's the thing, though. At least he, at least he has the excuse. At least, uh, at least he has the excuse of being a literal kid, effectively. I, I, he might not even be older than 20. You know, like he might he might not even be like over the age of twenty. We don't know how old he is. Oh, well, on the next page, uh, just because the next is uh is Rupert Murdoch and then the uh, yeah Rupert Murdoch Tattoo uh... CEO, but uh, Berger Ginderson, I, I was right. He is obsessed with white. He prefers white business casual outfits. And ties that aren't as jaunty as he thinks they are. So yeah, he literally wants to wear all white. I don't have words. I'm just... Remember, remember, white gnats have a habit of loving to be cucked by black men. They love it as much as insecure black people love BBC Netterare. Um, Keep that in mind! <laughs> Trilobite Leo. I, I hate that name so much. I, I, why would you name your kid that? Why? That, that's what you name it's, your it's, kid if you just, if you honest to God hate them. That's, why don't I just name them? I couldn't afford the abortion. <laughs> you know, the sad thing is, I bet there is someone named that on this planet somewhere. <laughs> There is an odd approach. There's odds approaching one that someone is named in in a fancy way. I survived the abortion. <laughs> I, I, no. Uh, no, at least I survived the abortion is at least a moniker of success. I'm like, yes, you survived. <laughs> The other one is saying, I, I literally, I would have aborted you, but I couldn't afford the money. <laughs> or, or maybe, why didn't, why didn't you die? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's like, why didn't you die? <laughs> why did you die? <laughs> um, Barlow Hawthorne. This, just moving, because I just saw this. Um. Yeah, because I, I, um, these ones are lame. <laughs> he, he spends a lot of time complaining about cancer culture. <laughs> oh, yeah. The woke's attacking me because I committed what's called one of the, an atrocity on par with uh, me lie. L look, they fucking deserved it. All 500 of those children in that in that overcrowded school, that overcrowded, disgusting urban school, they were all fucking terrorists. One Listen, of them pulled out a knife, and I used my God-given rights to use white phosphorus rounds on them. Listen, my men had to let off steam, but to compare this to Nanking is an insult. Is an insult. The, we, it, at the very an, least, ensured all of them died by the time we were done. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's an insult to us. We made sure they all got raped. <laughs> They we we actually hands. hired call... outside talent. We hired outside <laughs> talent to make sure we needed a consultancy. We broke open. We broke open a prison. <laughs> we broke open a prison and fo uh, we broke open a prison and recreated the Durlewanger Regiment. <laughs> and then... Thank God they all got tried for war crimes, because they were far worse than we ever were. <laughs> I fuck. 
fucking hate this book. No, I'm just imagining that literally... Actually, no, he says, back on Earth, his unit committed war crimes, but he doesn't think they were serious enough to care about it. I, I, I am really liking that this guy is just... just yeah, I did it, but... It does not, not care. It, it recognizes like, the fact that what he has done is horrible, but just doesn't care. No, he's like, his response is, oh, come on, man. Come on, uh, man. <laughs> listen, how dare you say, how dare you say that I ran a camp like Auschwitz? I ran it better. I ran it better and more efficiently. By the by the time by the time Allied for by the time by the time our our Allied compatriots finished the, finished cleaning out the city, I made sure all of them were taken care of. Listen, it you they call it a genocide, but that presumes that we were targeting only one ethnic group. Uh, to quote the group, we, quote the, to quote, we did quote all of them. To quote a great man, the senator from from Colorado, the, uh, we're making a mother of all omelets here, Jack. You can't worry about every single egg. <laughs> he may he may be he may have been a pussy who played hand egg rather than good old rugby, but Armstrong was a great man. <laughs> I model my. <laughs> I model my success <laughs> off of off of that great uh, great Space Marine Legion. Uh, what do they call it? The World Eaters. <laughs> no, 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 no. Wait, I got it wrong. I meant the Black Templars. No, no, no. At least the the Black Templars at least had a reason to fight. <laughs> at least they have. No, no, no. I based it on the I based it on the greatest force of justice in the 40k universe, the Night Lords. <laughs> Am I really Armstrong posting now? Yeah, this book is unsalvageable. I have to. We're just trying to make the most vile human being in the history of the world. <laughs> the Night Haunter had some great ideas. <laughs> the Night Haunter had some great ideas. <laughs> The only problem is he what he did he didn't go far enough. So I also took inspiration from the Marines malevolent. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, the Night Lords at least. Oh, he does too. That's the thing. He does too. He actually is annoyed people don't understand what he did was the god given good thing to do on this planet. He's upset people don't but understand what he's done did was for the good of the world. It's like, listen, I, I'm a biblical man, you know. I, I'm, I I, I'm of the exactly... belief that an eye for an eye. And let me tell you, a lot of people need to go blind on this godforsaken rock. I held back. I, no, wait, I, I held biblical... back. No, no, wait, I'm a biblical man, and by that I mean I worship Moloch. <laughs> I worship Moloch. <laughs> Hammurabi had it right, an eye for an eye, and I was holding back when I—I I was holding back. I could have blinded more people. King Leopold has nothing on my work ethic. <laughs> King Leopold was a rookie. We're working with uh, what was it, Omnidyne or whatever. We ensure for every hand that gets cut off, we give them a cybernetic one. Of course, they have to kill somebody to get it, but. Sometimes you we, know. you know, no, no, it was a, with our hands we give respect, and with our hands we take them. Rips off the hand of a small child working in the factory. Now pay, What's now pay for a new one. Slaps That's the kid thing. with his own arm. That's the other thing. They call them child soldiers, but when we take them right out of the womb and give them a gun, <laughs> is that really a child? <laughs> Look, as far as I can tell, I haven't committed murders. They're called post-birth abortions. And those are legal. And those are legal in some parts of the world. Now, <laughs> were those part Now, was that because I forced those governments to change the laws? Yes. <laughs> but I also made it retroactively applied. 
Look, people like that anime kid who used a death note to kill people. Why are you getting up my ass about doing the same fucking thing? At least I had the dignity to prove that I did it. You know, people keep saying if they went back in time, they'd kill baby Hitler. I just did that. I just did that now in the present. <laughs> I, I go there and I shake his hand. Say, you're an inspiration. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. I, I take his place. I want to prove him... R I want to show him how to do it right. <laughs> Fucker was an amateur. Not, not, Hitler? Puh. Amateur. Pathetic. Himmler? A weak-necked chicken farmer. No, you know who was really respectful back then? Heydrich. Lover of the you fine know, arts and an efficient ma machine of a man. We used the Volkstrom at the beginning of the war. <laughs> this book has broken you. We <laughs> did a palate cleanser. We're almost done with the section. We are all, I think we're halfway there, actually. If we skip the characters. In, in, in Imsit's defense, I have been kicking and screaming effectively this entire stream. You know what? Here. Skip the characters, go to page. Yeah, um, Hayati, uh, Hayati Jones is just an arrogant asshole. Anthony Pilgrim is basically based on the guy who owned Twitter originally, you know, the weird guy before he sent it to the Indian man. Uh, here's uh, car here's some cartel big shots. Hey, Eric look, it's, it's, it's your standard YouTube streamer. Joseph He's telling Diego. is selling himself. The center of American lawyers and wealthy Cubans who fled the Batista di dictate when the Batista dictatorship Are, didn't work out. Where the fuck is this? Oh, this is the next guy. Oh. American lawyers and... Oh, go fuck yourself. You pathetic sack of human shit. You stupid... Oh, my... I, I... How many ways can I insult him? Because this is like... Massively offensive to the Cubano population of fucking Florida, dude. Massively insulting. Yes, well, the I mean, initial should... people who fled, sure. But do you know how many people that either defied the government or was from prison was shoved out of there or tried to escape? A fucking lot, let me tell you. Well, listen, if they were going to betray the revolution, they should have been killed. Meanwhile, this writer would have been one of the first lined up to launch shot, probably by a war crimes man who owns the Goliath. I'm sorry, it's just that actually is honestly, like, that is such a fucking shit take. On, on like, an entire culture native, to, that is native to the state of Florida. Do you think he's mad just because, like, uh, Florida tends to vote Republican? Do you think that's why he's, like, th taking the knives yep. out and stabbing the Cuban? Yep. If, if you're wondering if you're wondering why, it's mainly because, um, uh, yeah. Uh, here's the thing. Because Hispanic pop and Latino populations tend to be actually socially conservative. They tend to be socially conservative. Um, Cubans tend to be also more economically conservative because guess where they fucking escaped from? Paradise. Because they, listen, they have doctors. It's free health care. Ignore, ignore the fucking Potemkin villages that, that Cuba also made. Seriously, Russia is only good. The only thing Russia is good at is lying. And all of the Soviet and all the post-communist governments tend to be. Except Vietnam. I, uh, Vietnam's cool. Yeah, I mean. Vietnam's cool. Still authoritarian, but well. Vietnam number I one. Heard. At least they didn't, you know, outside of a uh, up civil front, war, Vietnam, murder their own population. One. And I mean, they they literally beat everybody after like three decades of war. I mean, in, in their defense, they kind of had to because people kept fucking with them. Holy shit, leave them alone. Guess what happened after they were left alone? They made a mostly functional fucking country. That's more than you can say for most anti-colonialist unit forces, you know? Look, I'm just saying that, uh, I'm just saying that, uh, 
you shouldn't you shouldn't be uh you shouldn't be excited about crap like the Soviet Union and and communist China. Fucking celebrate the Vietnamese, man. Like that that is true fucking honor. That's like true badassery. They fucking fought what was it? The Japanese, the French, and then the Americans, and then the Chinese and Soviets to a lesser degree, mostly the Chinese. And then and then the Cambodians. Yeah, I I respect the Vietnamese. They 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 stopped the Cambodians. I respect the Vietnamese. The Khmer Rouge. And then they finally after again like Three to four decades Don't of war. Don't get me wrong. They did horrible war crimes themselves. I, in particular, Hanoi Hotel. They broke. They broke John McCain's arms to the point he can't. He couldn't use them right when he was alive anymore. Afterwards. So that you know they could be nasty bastards, but let's just say that was a nasty fucking war. I'm gonna look, look, look. I'm just saying that all of out of all the communist nations, Vietnam number one. Vietnam number one by far. Also, I, I think Nepal, since they elected uh, peacefully a, a communist party that actually didn't burn it down to the ground. I mean, they tried to initially, but they actually, like, peacefully entered and I think even left elections at times. I think. Look, I, I'm just, I'm just, I, I'm off topic. The Cuban man pissed me off. Oh yeah, the Vietnamese game studios, uh, it, it, they are becoming, uh, they have gotten somewhat better, especially since their prices are still kind of lower than your Chinese workers, but the conditions are probably a bit better, because China's a nightmare state. I, I'm sorry, it's just the, the Cuban guy pissed me off a lot. Uh... Hey, l- hey, let's um... get into criminal organizations, these could, these could be fun. You mean, you mean the, the illegal ones? The illegal ones. Here is four of the big gangs and some related side characters. There's the Hoshi group. This was formed by former orbital workers who trusted each other more than the authorities. They deal in illegal gambling, firearm smuggling, protection rackets, sex industry, construction schemes, and occasionally corporate blackmail. I can understand the construction schemes. I mean, that's literally what the mafia yeah. did. Uh, Hotel Melbourne. So that's the Australian gang. Lunar Gang, uh, they dominate the lunar drug trade thanks to the people on the inside of Shackleton Proprietary. Their own hidden moon... They grow moon weed. <laughs> they grow weed on the moon. Uh, May not Law be moon Z- wheat, but hey, moon weed. Yeah. Let's see. Next, Law Zero. These are the robots. And the Void Dragon Syndicate. By the way, the robots, they do robot crime. That that feels like an that feels like something I'd read out of Axe Cops. Then there's Law Zero. Law Zero's the robot gang. They commit robot crime. And occasionally charge a human. Can, tax can't you just to envision that? Land. And then Axe Cops like, I'll chop your head off, and like f- kills the robots. Well, hold on, wait. Law Zero does two kinds of crimes: supplying illicit goods to androids and robbing humans of their wealth. Uh, they obtain cash through fraud, theft. Uh, uh, to fund jailbroken parts, bootleg stolen corporate models, legal mods, unlicensed reproduction services, Android porn, and other entertainment, narcotics programs, and more. Luna Juana, yeah. Juana. Um, this is. They also have a. It, I don't know. Human this does feel unique. I don't. The concept human tax. Local Android run businesses that employ humans, so that they're, they're literally uh, enforcing racial. Employment. You're joking, but that was actually... Okay, so uh, I can go a little bit into the sadness of U.S. history. This was actually a thing that was done um, partially in the South and partially in the Midwest um, by certain cells of the... It was mainly in the 20s, if I recall, with like the KKK. Yeah, if if it's the KKK in Midwest 20s. Traditionally, what they would do... uh, It was not really a... There wasn't really a black tax because of segregation... But what they would occasionally do is if there were stores that that would actually sometimes cater to them, they would intimidate them to become a whites only. Like if there was some any form of like potential mixing, you know. And, and this was actually a lot more common, though, to intimidate them away from voting. It was a lot more common because like you're going to the polls, you know, like, let's say you're going to the polls, you learned how to read be, just to stick it because of literacy laws. And since you know how to read, they can't get you on that. 
And you're, you're getting there, and then all of a sudden, like, five guys in white hoods, and one of them's armed with a fucking pistol. Just, uh, you know, advises you to stay home tonight. And then, you know, because you don't feel like getting shot, you go home. You found out your neighbor disappeared that week. Similar thing with Law Zero. Uh, my, my only issue is I feel like maybe their crimes should be more focused. Like, because they kind of remind me of a booster gang from Cyberpunk, where their whole thing is just, like, augmentics. I don't know, I just kind of feel like... Uh... Oh, also, these two gangs, Law Zero and the Hoshi group, are friends. Because their leaders are friends. Void Dragon Syndicates, the oldest of the big gangs. They run like a corporation, complete with a thing for suits, boards overseeing their activities, and cartel connections. So, what's their crimes? Uh, drugs, racketeering, entertainment, cybernetics. I don't get the stupid... I don't get the corporation thing. It says here, the current board... Because the founders are dead or in jail, the current board is made up of old ladies from their extended family. I have a feeling that's got to be a reference to something, but I have no idea what. It sounds lame. All right, moving on to the minor gangs. The Block Boys. Uh, they mostly sell drugs, but they also yeah. do things like... Uh, so they also essentially do hacking work. Uh, next one, Daikatana Gummy. Gummy? Ja Japanese. If you're an organized crime family and science influence, oh, that's lame. Um, Finnabogamen. That's really lame. I think it's also a nod to that terrible game. Uh, GG Noir? No, Daikatana. It'll make you oh, your well, bitch. Oh, well, yeah, of course. Yeah. Finnbogenmen. I think this is Finnish. Finnish game. These days, this means forcing the no violence rule and make sure authorities don't come knocking. So they. This is a glorified security company. GG Noir is a cybercrime gang. Uh, there's only about eight of them, but they're all super elite hackers. And okay. Uh, and then live Estonian live gang or, or another Finnish gang for some fucking reason. And then the note, you know, actually, uh, because I feel like it, since I, 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 we're bringing up cyberpunk, uh, for my own cyberpunk campaign, I actually came up with my own gangs. Cause, uh, uh, the thing is I use cyberpunk 2020 or, but I also kind of ignored the meta plot and everything for the most part. It, it's kind of a, is it, is it, isn't it? Like, I, I bring nods to it, but I also kind of establish, like, at, at this point, it doesn't really matter. You get what I mean? Like, the concept of a night city may not necessarily be a thing, or, like, it was a project that failed. Arasaka is a thing, but is it the same type of Arasaka that you know? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, one of the gangs I actually came up with was actually a, a, an Albanian mob. They called themselves the Brotherhood because they started life effectively... Um, during the collapse of Albania due to, uh, during the collapse of the Balkans, you know, like the great Balkans kerfuffle as it became known as, because it's a big shit show. And they started life as almost like uh, the equivalent of the Republican army, you know, where they would funnel guns to the Albanians. Then they just kind of became a gun running, run, gun running paramilitary smuggling ring. You can hire them on as contracted bodyguards, or you can just, if you need weapons from the former Soviet Union, you can get them from there. Um, another one I had was actually a Korean based gang that, that, that was formed out of a variety of other East Asian conglomerates because they were terrified of Yakuza penetration because Yakuza or triad, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It was an op opposition to that. Their main thing was actually running the sports rings. They, they especially actually had big hands in the boxing circuits, boxing circuits. They also did a lot of animal fighting, uh, just betting in general. Occasional sports, dr uh, occasional drug running. I also included stuff like the Cornbread Mafia, which is an actual real-life crim crime gang. They they mostly Cornbread? do drug running. Yeah. There's also the maple. Mo There's also the maple syrup mafia. I'm not even kidding. 
It was a, a group of criminal people, uh, criminals that would tap into maple trees illegally and distribute syrup for cheaper. And it got fucking bloody. And no, this is not something I can... Like, some of the stuff I came up with is, like, not even mine. It's just real life. Real life is really weird. <laughs> also, I'm surprised there's no equivalent to the Irish mob or the or the crime families of, of Italy. Or even the Jewish mob, because that one's also pretty well established as well. Well, I mean... Because that would be diversity. And flavor and culture. Which this book... Also no, bra also, no Bratva organization. There's no Russian mafia here? Really? You're going to tell me there's no Russian nope. mob? Just Finnish. Two different Finnish mobs. That's you get, the, you get my and, issue? And like, it's a little weird. It's a where's little weird. The African, where's the African mob? Where's the, car where's the Latin American cartel? Where are the ethnic gangs, actually? Uh, well, I mean, does Japanese count? Um, in a way, I'd say, but we're talking like the kinds of gangs that form up because you have these ethnic identities. Oh, that... like another setting that uh, that uh, the Dice Gum Crew actually has occasionally come up with settings. And uh, we actually came up with our own kind of urban warfare setting. Uh, we could talk about that maybe one day, maybe not. But one of the gangs in there was known as the Jakarta Boys. And they were an Indonesian uh, Indonesian crime gang. That focused on a combination of working with the Golden Triangle, uh, hair, you know, opiates and stuff, but also gun running, and they also they also had ties to terrorism because they were started by a radical sect of I think Shia Shia Islam. If I remember the Jakarta Boys' origins fairly well, basically it was an Indonesian crime gang that established an outpost in a crime-ridden shithole of the city. There, there is also a, one of the weirdest gangs that we came up with was actually based on the there's an actual culture in the Congo in Central Africa where the whole thing is they're, they're, they're called the Congo dandies, where their whole purpose is they dress nicely. And, and to fund their habit and to also defend their part of the city, they actually entered into crime. They actually entered into crime themselves to make money off of it, primarily things like embezzlement and just essentially marketing scams. Gang strongholds. Look at this terrible map. Does this map help you? Because it doesn't help me at all. I am... No, because... Why is it designed like a fucking subway? I don't know. My brain is starting to lose consciousness. Look at Gigi Noir's logo. It's the goddamn, it's the goddamn Guy Fox mask. In this decade, really? <laughs> Again, I'm 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 starting to not understand things anymore. Oh, don't feel bad. My brain's been <laughs> this entire run. Anomaly King. Oh, I hate all their names too. Anomaly King. Daughter joined crime family after struggling to find work. Tough, strong whammon. Uh huh. Caster Hardman, freelance black hat hacker. He's the best hacker, and he also doesn't look like a dude who crawled out of his bed. He has the same look since high school. Oh, and he's, he's got also a boyfriend. also he's black. Black and gay. We we have to make all the black people hyper intelligent geniuses like Disney does. And we have to make them weird. We have to make them weirdly effeminate because otherwise it would terrify us for some reason. Y you notice that y you notice that they never make them. Y y they never really diverge besides the effeminate ally in, in modern media. Y you notice that? Oh yeah. Ah. Uh... Also, also, his boyfriend is Smiling Jin, which I think is a, a nod to Smiling Jack from that piece of shit Gearbox game. Which one? Aliens Colonial Marines? No, the one the one that they embezzled money from Aliens Colonial Marines to make. Borderlands, I Duke think it's Nukem? called. I was thinking Duke Nukem. 
I, I, I'm calling it shit just because I, I never was a big fan of Gearbox uh, at all for what they did. I'm petty. Internet people, uh, my, my, my viewers, you know I am sometimes a petty man. I, I have never liked Gearbox ever since they, they massacred my boy, Alien Colonial Marines, by embezzling money and programming time from it to put into fucking Borderlands. Yes, I am still kind of the big... I am still kind of the mad about it. I am not the big mad, but I am never going to... To give you an idea on how petty, Imsit can verify, I'm never touching Age of Sigmar. Yep. He can verify it. It doesn't matter how good it's going to get. Never touching it. Never touching it. But the steampunk mercantile dwarves. Fuck that. If they I want that, I'd play Eberron. Airshipped. I'd have to... If, fuck that. I'd rather... If I want that, I'd go to Eberron. I'd just go to Eberron, dude. They're the giant skeleton guys that are made out of a bunch of different souls that are literally just the IRS, but for bones. If I want that, I'd just read a Terry Pratchett novel. Um... There, there's nothing you can convince me on because of what because it took it had to kill Warhammer Fantasy to exist. I will forever models hate it good. as a concept. They make good models. I'm gonna just I don't give a shit about models. Never did. For those wondering, I cut my teeth on the 40k univ uh, universe actually through a combination of Dawn of War and Fantasy Flight games. I didn't touch the minis. That's not how I got in. Like, I don't give a shit about plastic stuff that costs, like, a hundred bucks. Saves money, honestly. Yeah. Besides, who am I going to game with with that plastic tat? Not many. To give you an idea, to give you an idea, there's not many local friendly gaming stores, because they keep seeming to die. Anyway, uh, the other people are... Well, let's just very quickly. Chinoda is the yeah. leader of that one gang. Petite, young, white pantsuit. She has another another boss babe. Uh, Lathan, he found work. Wiry, dark undercut, dark jacket. Insult his friends and say, I'll just fucking with you. They're cheap... Pocky. Pocky. Oh. Okay. Uh, Matilda Waltz, another another boss babe. Strong blue hair, eye patch, left eye is missing. Cybernetics don't work. Started dyeing her hair and wearing cold jackets. Blah blah blah. Boss babe. Syndicate manager, Mr. Silva. Uh, generic nice suit. Looks like standard Italian mob. Who gives a fuck? Noboro Yamada. Yamada being being the equivalent of Smith in Japan, by the way. What is this weird obsession with giving Japanese people beards? Is that his, like, type or something? That's like the eighth fucking Japanese person he's given a full beard on. Mm. And he has a fucking afro. <laughs> a short afro. By the way, the fun thing with Colonial Marines, to give you an idea on how much money they embezzled out of it to put into Borderlands, did you know that they actually, when they released it, forgot to turn on the alien AI? I'm, I'm not I'm not fucking with you. You, you. You've literally changed two lines of code in the alien's AI, it activates, and the game immediately becomes playable. Did they patch it? No. Oh... Or if they did, it was like after the actual hotfix was out for a long time. You, you literally, all you had to do was change like two lines of code yourself. And it would turn the alien AI on. And this is why you play Alien Isolation, folks. Oh yeah, um, it's to the point. I'm actually such a piss baby, I, I don't think I can ever finish it. Oh, I beat it. If you're wondering, it's the medical deck. That That's the heart attack yeah. inducing one for me i know it's like the first big time you have to deal with them but like fuck 
Oh, they... I mean, that's a mark of a good game, though. Yeah, but I... It's just... The worst ones are the long deaths, where it's like... He plays with you. Because he does that sometimes when he kills you. Uh, Shinji Enzai, um, Stern Eye Gentle Giant, tries to kill he, he, He's based. What? He needs to get into the fucking robot. Yeah. Smiling Jack, I mean, Smiling Jin. Yeah, it's Smiling Jack from Borderlands. Please get killed by the protagonist. Law, yeah. Law Zero Enforcer, owner of a fried squid stall in the Lou District Night Market. So, for some reason, this robot who dislikes humanity is serving food to humanity. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Does it make sense to you? Yeah. Uh, currently, yes. I don't know why, but I'm just saying yes. Do you want to talk about how? Do you want to talk about anime doofenshmirtz or the animorphs instead of this book? Um, I'm halfway tempted to literally just say fuck it for the rest of the book and just say it's just bad. Um, although I just realized now that our Daniel Ol Olwa, it's probably uh, named after some fucking character we don't know, but he's designed um, off of a Daft Punk. He reads robot. marks. He reads Marx. He reads Marx? Communist robot. No, no, communist racist robot. Wait, isn't isn't Oliva also the Jewish robot? No. Um, it was because that's really not a Jewish last name. But, um... <laughs> you, you, you know what? I'm tempted. Let's look. Chat, let's see. Because there is I'm the Jewish robot. Oh, uh, my brain. Control F Jew. Um. Oh, it's Yitzhak Sadek. Okay. Thankfully, okay. Let's get back to the book. Oh, Lord, have mercy. So the Daft Punk robot, he's a crime robot communist man who probably... Oh, God. Uh... Singularists, Max. I, I hate they want, the want They want the singular... They want the singularity. Every... It's a movie, Bob. Every problem can be solved with computers. Any problem that aren't solvable now will be solved later with better computer. Oh, yeah, computer. if you turn on the AI, uh, Aliens Colonial Marines turns from, like, a 4 out of 10 game, or, like, a 3 out of 10 game to, like, a 5.5 or a 6 out of 10. It says here, intelligent people are simply better than other people. Equality is not ideal. Um, when the singularity comes, humanity, as we know, will be obsolete. So y people who don't believe in singularity oppose progress. So, yes, this is Movie Bob. Yeah. This is Movie Bob's ideals in a nutshell, actually. Though, a, a little bit more forward-thinking, in the sense that they do also honestly... consistency, do, too. They probably do want to help humanity instead of just allow him to murder the people he doesn't like. Well, also, Movie Bob's a coward who will immediately try to backtrack any, any you know, like, thing he gurgles on his, on his Twitter account. So, uh, uh, yeah, everything is solved by computers, STEM knowledge, okay, blah, 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 so. Influence. Realistically, the singularity probably won't happen anytime soon, point five. If you're looking for good arguments against AI alarmism, a decent start is Maciej Siglowski's talk, Super Intelligence, the idea that eats smart people. And um, he, much like real life, online atheist skeptic communities of the early 2010 can, uh, contributed to the rise of later hate movements. But with slightly fewer rants about women, go fucking, go fucking jump into a pool with a with a bunch of sharks, you fucking where is, asshole. Where is that six point six? Uh, where's the six? Oh, I see the new barons. I don't have so any words so wait to say. so that 
So Gamergate is a part of the Singularists? Yes. This whining Australian cunt. Filled with a hatred of the people who prevent him from being murdered in his house. So, violently. wait, no. This makes movie Bob a part of Gamergate. By this man's logic, yes it is. My eye is twitching really hard right now. Uh, get down to it. Singular, so really just a small band of nerds who futurist beliefs border on religion. However, the off-world cartel is a big fan of their views. It turns out people who believe utopia could happen faster if everyone showed up about fixing things or easy to control. Yeah, you, you know, this is almost like, remember when I was ta uh, just going on in like a psychotic person, like Charlie from It's Always Sunny about Pepe Sylvia, uh, you know, about how to improve the corporate, you know, the, 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 oh uh, God, my brain is dying. Um, The cartel. Yep. You remember how I was talking about that conspiracy? Yep. Having them push a form of tech cultism is not a bad idea for that. But uh, honestly, it'd be smarter to focus on alleviating the problems of people. Because a content populace is a lot more willing to let shit get shoveled down their throat than an angry one. <laughs> Also, let's be fair, um, tech cult, uh, the tech progress obsession, we lo fucking love science crazy. Not necessarily the strongest base to build your weird state cult around. Plug me into the AI hive mind. I want to be a part of a nightmare machine too. They get invited onto TV shows to explain their beliefs. New sites run puff pieces on well-dressed singularists who think some people... So, so is this the writer kind of loosely thinking that the people who make fun, you know, like the people who make fun of him are all paid for by an elite conglomeration of evil corporations or something? Is the Australian so writer man thinking the, that like we're being the paid by George Soros? Are being paid, yeah, by the ant by the anti Soros, the anti symbol of peace. <laughs> I, I'm gonna shove the occasional my hero fucking reference in here every now and again. Antisaurus only... runs, who runs the NGO Closed Community. <laughs> so the Singularist movement's less than a decade old. Not everyone believes in the Singular. So yeah, it's just a tiny community of like weird, obsessed tech cultists. Cyrus I mean, Berryman, to make him a point. Hmm? By this logic, technically, they should have what uh, an organization called Grand Cross first. Yeah. Run by a, uh, a um, like a how do you parody Nick Fuentes? Um, a shock, um, a shock jock kind of who is a self-loathing homosexual. You already have Jim Norton from Opie and Anthony. <laughs> The, the difference is he has a fondness for because there are cat uh, there are animal augmentics. He regularly hires uh, very effeminate cat uh, cat eared augmentic cyborgs at that night using that one app that we I don't remember. I think the book actually does have a sex worker app that they talk about in this. I don't remember. I'm gonna be honest. I'm I'm my brain's surprisingly good at demolishing information from this book. I only remember like the the biggest hits like Blunch Time and multi caliber guns and That's killing deep. people bad and 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 having a dog is as expensive as having an entire military equipment uh, all the military equipment and hardware to to storm Parliament. So th this guy is like your your basic. Um, I think this might be, I, I don't know much about him, uh, who he's making fun of, but it's just some guy. The AI reporter tech guy is also some guy. He isn't one, he just has a podcast with Singularists called Enter the Singularity. Oh, think, that's, uh, that's Joe Rogan. This has to be Joe Rogan. Probably. Possibly, but he says messy hair and, you know, Joe's bald. Could be other... Could be other people. 
Now imagine if the writer was a wannabe auteur in his 30s who doesn't know what 80s Hollywood directors dress like, but feels very strongly that's his style. So that's the writer actually doing a legit fucking meta joke in his own writing. I wish I was in a Capellan re-education center. The mind flenser would be quite happily used upon me. Honestly, I wish I was a fucking servitor. It'd be great. You don't gotta think, and you don't gotta read shit like this no more. Here's the problem, though. Uh, that latter, the former thing, that's a that's a coin flip. Oh, the ability to think. Yeah, yeah. So they might do that. Unfortunate. Capellan they... Reeducation Center. It is. Let's skip the bullet. Just exterminatus for me. Vijay Das, Omnidyne Engineer. Uh, everyone who will have a cyber brain within the decade, dispelling the LMJ syndrome myth. Corporate thinks it's perfectly normal. It's probably some other boogeyman among this guy's weird little friends group. I don't know, and I don't fucking care. Divide Zero, a singularist android. Uh, just some guy. Jihao Lin, Nomen Amadadrum. Become a streamer, but it didn't work out, so recovered with the help of singularist acquaintance. Determined to pay the favor. So, a loser. Hey, Tony it's Osborne. an anime guy. Just anime guy. Anime guy. Who's been feuding for years ever since Max told Dungeon and Dragons 4th Edition is the best one ever. One of Max's few correct opinions. Oh, that, that's an author. Author's Who's read. Who's been feuding for years? 4th Edition's the best one. Let me guess, this guy's a fan of 5th Edition, isn't he? Probably, but... 3.5 is better. And basic and Dungeons and Dragons Basic is also pretty good. Second edition has a lot of cool shit, but you also have to deal with Thacko, which I consider the devil. I honestly consider Thacko to be one of the worst ways to determine how to hit something ever. But I'd still take it over fifth edition and what it's fucking turning into. Reminder, Wizards of the Coast is still intentionally going to try to change the open gaming license. They're just hoping people forget about that. Because, you know, the outrage is over. Wait, wait, uh... Wait, this guy's a fan of D&D 4th Edition? Sorry, I got it wrong. Yeah, no, he said 4th is the best one. Fucking cursed. Fucking cur Like, that's becoming a more popular opinion, sort of, for some reason. I think it's just because of what 5th is turning into. And also, you know, the heart grows fonder when it's not like that. But the the problem is, at the end of the game, it's more of a minis game than a tabletop game, you know? Like, yeah, if I, I, I don't know. It's just, I, it's way too different from the earlier editions. I can't find myself to really find myself enjoying 4th too much. I, I just, you know, it's not my thing. If you like 4th, I ain't gonna... Hey, fine. Uh, you probably also enjoy Pathfinder 2nd, which is very much a spiritual successor to it, or a spiritual side piece to it. Personality, cranky, opinionated, loud. Tony's a proud of otaku and snobby about it. Oh, is is this the guy who constantly kicked uh, the Australian man out of all of the fan groups because he was just fucking wrong? Is this the guy who's like, you're not a real anime fan? Because you didn't read the manga. Max Babylon, big deal singularist. What what massive influencer is this guy based on? I'm going Sargon. Thunder. It, it's... <sighs> Science communicator, a bill knife for a new generation. Yeah, this, I'm thinking Thunderfoot. Yeah, that has to be it. Not surprising. He, uh, this Australian man probably really fucking hates Thunderfoot because I think he's from Australia. I forget. Is, is he an Aussie or is he from the? Br he's a Commonwealther. He just lives in America now, though. I just know he probably hated him the moment he started talking about feminism. 
His rhetoric got worse. How d Thunderfoot, you used to do good content, but now you changed to talk about how women bad, and you talk about politics now. I hate you, says the angry Australian man writing this. I don't know, like... I... My brain hurt. My brain hurt. We might be almost done. We just have to get through to all the political groups. Help me, Jesus. Builder United. Uh, builders. They they focus on benefits. Legal aid. It's a, it's a group. Now. Yeah. There's That's an now. old lady. She's cool. And then there's the middle-aged man who's cool. And then some other guy who's young. Federation Row, it's a pro-Earth organization. Unite Humanity under a central federation. It was founded by scientists. Scientists who helped plan the political systems of Grand Cross and... What the fuck crack? What the fuck? What the fuck type of crack are you idiots smoking? <laughs> yes, because Grand Cross turned out so great. Also, what the fuck? It was established as a multinational board. What type of asshole fucking sets it up by its scientists? Wouldn't they? Wouldn't they actually have it set by like administrative, like compromises between the nations that contributed to the region? Or in the case of the moon, divide it into its political spheres based on which nation colonized it? Or by which multinational effort it was, and then set a sim like a fucking condominium based on that. If you're wondering, a condominium is an actual form of government. Basically, uh, it's an area that's ruled by multiple countries, and they have jurisdiction over it. An example of one's actually the Principality of Andorra. It is a condominium between France and Spain. Both technically own it, and they share power in it. They don't usually function too well, but you kind of have to in certain cases like this. But, like, are you really going to have scientists set this shit up? Look, here, here's the thing. If, if, you, if you had me ask a nuclear... I, I could ask a nuclear physicist how a reactor works, right? And I would get a completely correct answer. I wouldn't trust a nuclear physicist to be able to make a functional democracy. Unless he also understands the basics of balance of power and has read up on successful forms of government successful constitutional basis is and, and other shit like that you know political science is a soft piece of shit science but it's still a science at the end of the day like do you, th do you think a nuclear physicist would be able to understand the concepts such as proportional representation fuck no do you think a, do you think a nuclear physicist would be able to understand the why uh would be able to understand the, uh, what weaknesses a unimercural house has compared to a bimercural house and vice versa? If you probably taught them, yes. I mean, yeah, if you taught them, but that's not their main field. This would be like, you you rock up to a dentist, right? You rock up yes, to a dentist and you, and you say up front, I have a brain aneurysm that's going to burst in a few hours. Can you open my brain and fix it? The dentist would look at you. The dentist would look at you going, what the fuck, and direct you immediately to an emergency room so they have a neurosurgeon or a vascular surgeon. I'm I'm pretty sure the only thing he could use is just douse him with Novocaine to just knock him the fuck out. Would you trust an anesthesiologist to run a nuclear reactor? Would you trust a would you trust a bus driver to fly a seven forty seven? I mean, they're both vehicles, so yes, it should work. <laughs> oh God, uh, would you would you trust? Uh, let me think. Would you trust a psychologist to c be able to perform open heart surgery? They both have a doctorate. That's right. Would you trust? Would you trust an orthopedist to be able to find you veins of veins of silver in an untapped mountain range? This is just getting ridiculous. I'm giving you examples of why there is a thing called expert limitations. It's actually one of the things a lot of scammers love to do, where it's like, hey, this is Dr. Rudebacher. 
what's he a doctorate of? Don't don't question it. And he's like actually like a fucking dentist, but he's like talking about how he invented it, uh, an an emotion, you know, and it uh, was it an infinite motion machine or something stupid like that. Like I, I I'm a physicist by tree. No, he's not. He's a, he's a fucking dentist. Or no no he's fucking not. He's an organic chemistry chemist. I'm scroll. Per TTRPG, I would trust the bus driver to fly the 747 because the drive skill is universal. <laughs> That's pretty good. I like that one, Squirrel. That's pretty good. That's right. pretty good. Uh, move on then to Green, Green Orbit. Orbit. Um, help Earth. Ready to start lending aid to Earth rather than the other other way around has launched several successful campaigns to increase investment in environmental science open more park space and luna and race support groups like techno progressive party they've been having trouble with nano futuristics so like yeah. what's their actual politics are, are are they basically the same psychopaths who in gundam would like try to throw an asteroid at earth to fix the to fix the environment no i think it's just basically it would be like haiti sending aid to the united states our souls are bound by the weight of gravity. We must escape from the Earth to achieve our balance as the new type. And if you don't leave, we're going to throw asteroids at you because my daddy. All right. Next group. <laughs> the new barons. These are these are your, your fedora atheists, man. No, no, no. They're a pro-Earth na nationalist group attempting to hijack the conversation about around orbital independence and use it to spread their beliefs. Oh, oh so this is America first. Oh. They hold that Western civilization is responsible for every major scientific advancement in history, and therefore only the Western world, which, by which they mean white people, prefer... Okay. Ha uh, okay. okay. Saitama. Okay. Like, about to fight uh, the co dominator of the universe. Okay. Wait, wait. Characters. Jesse Gorbold. A Former anime reviewer, site webmaster, and failed TV personality who pivoted to this after his vocal opposition to Android rights cost him work. He grifts for donations, but is paid staggering amounts of money by a cartel oligarch. I have no idea who this is supposed to reference. I don't know, and I don't. Roman statues weren't even white. Yeah, they usually were. They usually were painted, asshole. But you know, the paint kind of dries and dissipates mm -hmm. and now we're left with the marble I, i'm just i'm just annoyed because this is just pathetic like it's a pathetic straw man of the people you're screaming about about you know like I, i'd have the same problem if it was like a, a horrible take on like a communist group where it's like they're all a bunch of loser welfare leeches who just screech uselessly on the internet don't get me wrong, there's cafe communists that are like that. But then you got the ones that actually commit acts of freedom. And by that, I mean causing horrible things. Bless you. Uh, this book is giving me allergies, man. That's... Phil Azimuth is a science fan who works at a startup. Uh, Max Babylon fans and trying to recruit. Omega Points He's, a flat Earth. He's a flat Earth believer. What the fuck? So this is like He's your pastiche space. of the hyper Republicans. He, There's at least a plausibility because people they haven't been to space that they're dumb enough to believe the flat Earth. But you're in fucking space. Oh no! There, there's people that will still lie, like they, they, because it's just literally contrarianism. You know, what would be funnier is if he believed the moon was actually a hollow alien artifact. Like, if you want him to be goofy, wouldn't that have been funnier? Or that the Mar or that the Martians actually fought the fought the Jews from another dimension in a great war on ancient Earth? That's an actual that's an actual belief. Yep. It was founded by spirit science. <laughs> like, if you're gonna go goofy, just go goofy, you know. Believes in the theory Jews in space. They're from space. They're not from this earth. They're actually from another dimension, actually. Spirit science believes they're actually an, uh, a, an, a fifth dimensional race that, that were banished to a fourth dimensional frame because they failed to properly ascend. 
They learned they learned the lessons, but didn't apply them correctly, according to Spirit Science. I mean that that would be accurate, but I, <laughs> the the learning the lessons but failing to apply them. I mean that's read the Bible. That's kind of yeah, and, and because of, of that, happens. they were they were banished from the higher dimensions to the next to the next lowest one. Did not realize Israel was a dimension. <laughs> oh no, no, because Israel was actually a higher dimensional frequency. You, you, you were instead of dealing just with space time, you dealt with even further fundamentals of the universe beyond us. You know how like a two dimensional shape would not understand, uh, understand like a three dimension, like the concept of, of uh, you know, you, you go length, width, but they don't yeah. understand height. Mm -hmm. Similar logic. Spirit science is brain damage turned into a person. Uh, spirit science is what happens when you constantly abuse Ahiwaska and take that shit as gospel. He fried his brain on hallucinogenics. This is why I, I honestly think shit like LSD, and even and even to a lesser degree weed, but not to a complete degree, I, I think that hallucinogenics, unless you really know what you're doing, don't fucking take them. And also, for the love of all that's holy... If you have a history of schizophrenia in the family, don't fucking take it. Ever. Ever. If you're wondering why, um, so, uh, fun fact. Drugs can sometimes activate, uh, can sometimes activate receptors and stuff. It might accidentally kickstart mental illness you would otherwise not have had. Like, even something as innocuous as weed could accidentally trigger schizophrenia. Not, not fucking with you. It, it, yeah, don't play around. Don't play around with your brain chemistry, kids. Unless you have a good idea on how stable you actually are. And also, if you well, if you have any form of self-loathing, do not fucking take acid. You will have a bad time. Let's move on to another uh, organization, Final Frontier. That sounds like a that, so, that sounds like a horrible like. It sounds like a terrorist group, doesn't it? Uh, no. I. Or like an evil scientist organization. I mean, they just want to build more habitats. It's the Guild of Calamitous Intents. Intent. Yeah, but those people actually make sense. Yeah, they do. They they try to give rules to villainy so that you don't uh, so that y you don't make everything fall apart into chaos. Uh, speaking of which, Venture Brothers, uh, box at DVD, uh, think on sale in a few months, so get it. Fun fact, uh, did you know that them getting renewed was was shelved in favor of Velma? Why? <laughs> because Mindy Kaling, for some reason, is able to fail her way to success to the point of getting a fucking medal from the president. For making the worst fucking animated show that has appeared on television since Seth Rogen's glorious production, Santa Incorporated. Which is the previous title holder for worst animated show ever made by a human. Oh, did did I just make you hate Velma more? Oh yeah, yeah. You get that you could thank that. <laughs> I'm gonna archer now. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to make the guild and I'm going to make. Now, now admittedly, well, they might not have ever actually honestly were going to make the Venture Brothers, but you got to keep in mind, they no, do have the not. rights to it. They did have the rights to it. They could have chosen when they canceled all of their other animated works to just make another round of that. They chose I mean, Velma. They were gonna... They're making the movie, at least. They chose Velma. Best animated show on HBO Max. It's the only animated show. You know, this book is uh, very interesting when we want to talk about everything but this book. All right, next. Uh, free Orbit, uh, make Grand Zeon. Cross independent. Liberate Orbit, uh, make all new habitats independent. Uh, organized Labor. Um, oh, no, the, the leader of Liberate Orbit is also a lifelong campaigner and activist for, for just the Rainbow Coalition. I don't, um, I don't know how that 
translates into uh, being a free outwear, but I mean, I guess it, I understand, but you know. Opposes corporate habitats. I mean, I guess. What does I mean, a I bunch of corporations just like do? Do they do they make fun of you? Do they? Is it is it the African man again? Is he saying why are you yeah. gay? <laughs> that might be why. <laughs> why are you gay? Um, or, or do you, or do you actually given given the situation, it, it could be him and the, and the Norwegian Nazi man saying, "Why are you gay?" As they're both peeing on the Norwegian man's wife. <laughs> <laughs> they have a bro code. He's an honorary Aryan. <laughs> <laughs> African man's an honorary Somehow it works. Some <laughs> hot towered. It just works. They the had an excuse with the Japanese because of their fucked up uh, I ideas on ethnicity. How the fuck you do that with someone from Africa when that is entirely the opposite of how the Nazi racial hierarchy was? I don't know, but it's just Who him. Knows? It's just him. <laughs> just... No, it's no, it's because that... it's because the Nigerian man actually has ancestry from an Eng from an Englishman, and is in there somewhere. He's more Aryan than I am. The one percent rule. The one percent rule, but in reverse. The one, you know, the one drop rule, but in reverse. If you have a speck of. If you have a speck of, of white blood in you, you can claim to be an honorary Aryan. <laughs> also, he really guy... he just really likes watching him watching him pork his wife while he watches. <laughs> he's right. just given up on shame. He's like he's like war crimes man. He's just like blatant about it. like yeah 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 I, I'm a cuck. What about it? Oh, you're gonna try to insult me? Like, here's the thing, though. By the at the end of it, all of us get our rocks off. Why are you insulting me for being a, for like watching another man fuck my wife? I fuck my wife too. <laughs> <laughs> and listen, the other guy's worse off. He doesn't get. I don't get to fuck his wife. <laughs> she's missing out. Yeah, she's missing out, man. <laughs> uh, unions. I get the best of both worlds. <laughs> I think our head uh, of the weirdest bromance ever is, is the best thing that came out of this book. I just want to see this dysfunctional gang of corporate overlords. Like, like you have this cursed shit, and then you have Rupert Murdoch going, "Oh God, I have to censor another scandal between the two again." No, no, publish it. What? <laughs> it makes us look really diverse. <laughs> It's already been on Pulsar. Yeah, Just... yeah, you have the social media guy with, like, his hands lighting up. Yeah, it's already on Pulsar, man. Like, you're not censoring shit. And, and then you have the, the Norwegian Nazi man just say, the be any reputation is better than no reputation. <laughs> he, 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 he hosts the contest on, saying, on seeing who could fuck his wife the best. <laughs> I'm proud of my white wife. I want to make everyone else proud of her as well. <laughs> she is a queen, and you are her subjects. <laughs> you are her subjects. God, I needed that because this book sucks. All right, on to the unions. Union of extravehicular workers. Solidarity now. Uh, information and service workers. A grand alliance alternative to solidarity now. Is an actual astroturf workers' rights organization sponsored by right wing activists and their corporations. Oh, and and, and uh, unions. Uh, oh, are wait, wait. Yeah, it says the Police Benevolent Association of the Station of Grand Cross is part of the Grand Alliance, naturally. Fuck you. The Axes, a militant faction. Because By the way, you know you what? Like, you like how he how they love unions until the moment it's for jobs they hate. 
And they, see, it, they they you know cheer what? they cheer when say like teachers unions defend actual fucking sub you know sub garbage, right? They cheer when they they defend their rights or like. They cheer when, like, an awful fucking garbage hack is allowed to stay and, in, 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 you know, that's a friend of theirs. But the moment they, they shield a cop who actually commits fucking crimes, you know, similar crimes as those people, or, like, you know, an actual bad cop, then they lose shit. That's fucking... I fucking hate that hypocrisy. There's a balancing... In my opinion, there's a balancing act with unions. They have a, they have a useful function... But sometimes the administrative staff become that runs those things become as bad as the boss sometimes, and actually commit economic suicide for you, the worker. Because a lot of companies will just say, you know what? Why deal with that when I can just send my jobs to Vietnam? Vietnam, I could pay like motherfucker what one quarter what I pay you. No, I know it's not one quarter now. It's one fifth because you stupid motherfuckers went above the state average, went above the the country average for your stupid union. Oh, what's that? Uh, you're gonna pick it and actually try to like a, a better example would actually be German unions because uh, they they have actually have some cool stuff. Like you, you know how uh, you know a really cool thing about about that type of union and German unions. Rather than rather than trying to defend people from getting fired, what they'll instead do for companies is they'll negotiate, and sometimes they'll do what's called a collective pain, where instead of firing someone to downsize the company, the arrangement is they instead cut hours collectively from all workers to ensure that people don't get laid off, at least in the short term. Eh. Uh, they call it collective pain because the idea is it's a, it's supposed to be sort of a temporary thing. And because they have enforcement, companies that try to do stupid shit so can get punished. I'm not saying German unions are perfect. There's probably German... There may be a German watcher or two who can completely critique it, and that's totally fine. I'm just saying I'm not necessarily anti-union. I'm anti too much power to any committee, be it corporation or union. Because uh, I, I'm of the follower of, I forget the name of the Frenchman that came up with it, but uh, the beauty of the balance of power is, see, those in power are corrupt morons, right? Who want to collect more of it. But if there's other corrupt morons they have to fight over, as long as there's not too many of them at once, it prevents them from making the system worse. That is literally the concept of the balance of powers, and I actually am a big fan of that. Also, all cops, uh, according to this writer, who would immediately call them the moment someone broke into his house. Like, against a group called the Axis, uh, committed to revolutionary violence, okay. including bombing and sabotage, you know, on the space station. Oh, and they're also anti-immigrant and anti-refugee. And virulently anti-android, so these are not good people. Or they might go full red-brown. Which, for those of you who do not know, those are the colors for the communists and the fascists. Oh yeah, this is Nazbol. Nazbols exist in this setting, and that's what, and that's their their union, like, evil group. Is this guy, like, softly anti-union? Because I'm noticing he, he seems to dislike no, I, several I, of them. Um... Because Solidary uh, Now also has issues, uh, internal issues, too. Um, this is written by a different guy, Matthew Lynn. So he is probably actually saying, yeah, unions are important, but here are the problems. I mean, there's some unions that actually are, like, he, he's supportive of. But, like, I, yeah, this is actually more balanced than usual. Like, it, It's clear that he's actually, even with his critique of the... Uh, police unions he is well remember saying... the writer probably demanded that he was even more harsh on him and i, I yeah. will say this um police unions have the same problem teacher unions have sometimes and that they're too powerful he, he is saying here that like you know you know bad. some of the cops who have been, who have killed people and caused like mass protests because of the people they killed nine times out of ten they were usually protected by their union for a prior accident before they did that one I mean, some of it's also training. If you're wondering, another issue with police is they're, they're still kind of trying to figure out exactly what we want our police to do. 
And there's a lot of very staid, conservative, they're coming right for us type of idiots. Because again, police unions are, are pretty good at keeping people in. So but, things like training sometimes are not exactly where they are. And sometimes you just have straight – and let, let's be fair. Sometimes you just straight up have dickheads who look forward to the day they get to pull their weapon and use it. There are bad cops. They exist out there. I just – I just, there's a point where I'm like, could you stop crying about that? Because I know for a fact the moment you got broken into, you'd cry and call them. The moment you would have any trouble that you could be like a legal issue, you would call them. It's like the cafe communist who preaches revolution, but you know they would be the first lined up against the wall. Or the first who would be forced to strip all their assets for the cause. You know? Like, it's infuriating. But back onto the, um, just the union thing, because I'm. After we're done with the unit, I'm just calling it. Just yeah, um, I'm getting. But I'm having I, a headache. I do want to point this out. The hold Pascal. He says it's a star. He's a Star Wars. Uh, star Wars of union politics his entire adult life. Um, and known as a wheeler and dealer, and is seen as part of the corrupt old guard. But he's starting to take an increasingly radical line since the corporation started turning the screws. Which version is the real Pascal remains unclear. I mean, that's at least an interesting character, then. You can see that this guy's been in the political arena for a while. He's maybe part of the problem, but he also doesn't like the corporations. And, or he, he's seen as part of the problem because of corruption, but he has lines even he doesn't want to cross, or he thinks this, that the issues are getting worse, and he's actually trying in his own way to solve it, even if you disagree with how he's doing it. Or Roosevelt Prophet saying is uncompromised commitment to the cause and her competence, decades of experience, a list of arrest warrants longer than her arm. Um, uh, her intensity can be off-putting even to her few friends. So it, it's clear the writer of this is telling us, yeah, um, violence is bad. Don't do it. Like, unions can, are, are a force of good that protect workers sometimes, but on occasion, they're either co-opted by the corporations that essentially run them, like they'll pick people to essentially try to strike break, or they get hijacked by lunatics. Like, it, it's soft pro, but like, it's also warning you of things like fanaticism. And again, I, this is a testament to this book. It's always the writers that are not the main writer that usually does the best work in it. And then finally, Union of Robots. Claims to be the oldest labor union for solidarity among mechanical and biological. Um, uh, they're also communistic. Woo! Woo, gay communist base robots. Woo! Oh, and common writer. Oh, god damn it. A yeah, you're fellow right. robot Joe. Joe is an excellent behind the scenes organizer, if for strapping on a bug eyed tokusatsu inspired helmet and riling up crowd street actions. And that's what I'm going to call it. I'm. Do it. No, no, no. Not no, with no, the no, only no. episode. I'm done with the fucking book. I'm Let's see how much more we're we're gonna. Oh my god. We have about twenty more pages, and it's and it's just characters. It's just characters. Uh. Yep. Fuck this. I'm I'm Fuck done. Fuck uh, this. After reviewing this book, it needs an editor. It needs trimmed. It needs actual diversity. It needs uh to have a clear, more concise story. I want to say that there's something here in terms of a plot, uh, in terms of an area to explore, but dear God, there's just so much unnecessary filler. Okay, so here's my thoughts on this book. The core mechanics, from what I recall, they were perfectly acceptable for what you needed them to be. 
I have some issues on how they handled resources. Uh, their equipment and detailing was not very... It's not that it wasn't very well designed, but it just it felt a bit simplistic. And also, uh, this is they they had the economic burden, yeah? Yeah, that was, that was actually an interesting system. The concept system. is interesting, but the way it's handled is not why it was not well. As a whole, it's functional. I think you could actually run a game in this relatively fine. But the fluff, holy shit, the fluff. Oh my god. Ranging, it, it, it's a mess. Ranging from actual Norwegian Nazis, which... Let me tell you, it's almost as stigma it's almost as stigmatized there as it is in Germany. It is, so that's fucking ridiculous. To that the guy like that being able to actually work with an African. Like I know money talks and people walk, but really. Uh, the high propensity of Western people. You know, like Western slash developed world people that would have actually in another timeline where stuff like that happened would not be in power. There was a lack of actual multiculturalism on the station for the whole. In fact, I'm honestly, to give you an idea, I'm honestly fucking surprised the, the leader of the bank was an African. I am surprised about that. Besides some Indonesians and Malaysians, that's the only non-white or non-east asian group that i remember seeing in there to them diversity seems to be oh i like taking it up the bum as a man and Which, japanese who cares who cares in this modern time of 2020 man no one does like your diversity is cool, like whatever, you know? There's no cultural diversity. They don't go into details about the actual... Like, they talk more about the fucking road system than they do the actual city. And the venues. The fucking venues. It was all cafes or Japanese salaryman bars or more cafes or more salary bars, or more full liquor bars. Well, 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 there's like one other thing that they, I think they had like electronics and anime too, and that was about it. Where's your industrial district? Where's your district that actually uses 3D printing to design basic consumer electronics using stuff that you mine from the asteroid system that's hauled in from the near Earth asteroid belt? Or alternatively, from Luna or Mars. Where's that? Where's your shipping facility? Where's your maintenance crew designed for that? Where's your union of railway workers? That's a thing. Notice that. They didn't have a union of fucking rail staff workers maintaining the roads. So that's not a failure of the Garian systems. That's a failure of the fucking public transportation guild there. Unless Garian bought them. I don't know. The corporations as a whole are either bog standard or poorly thought out. There is a seething despot, like a, like the author just occasionally would reveal how nasty, petty, and little they are by constantly, constantly needling shit in their notes, and especially against cops. Look, there's there's some disgusting fucking cops, but god fucking damn it, you can only say all cops. So many times before you just want to smash your head until you stop thinking against the fucking table. And don't get me started on, on how they handle Android's AI intelligence and all that sort of stuff. That's a side product because he's like, it's cool, I can use the touch comas from Ghost in the Shell. That doesn't really do anything for the system. They barely go into the fears about automation. There's no concern about that. The other writers for the book had to cover that unions fucking hate robots because they get replaced by them. Robotic Age covered it better with their crazy Christian terrorist cell. G26. You want to know why they hate robots so much? Because of the automation. They're also terrified at the concept that hum humans are playing God. Because do they have a soul? They don't fucking know. 
Does that unit have a soul? They don't know. And if it does, that says a lot about humans. And they don't want to know that. Ugh! The fluff is just infuriating because it's either barely thought out, ripped off from another source, snarky fucking meta crap, a sni sniping at mo sniping at dated reference, and full on just knives out on people you fucking hate. Ugh. It, it's this. It's a combination of well, it's an Australian writing about American politics without of understanding the 2010s. it fully. Um, and combining every single anime reference he can think of. So Squirrel thinks it's garbage fire? I actually can't give it that. And no, I'm not saying it's worse than that. I'm actually saying the fluff is deep hurting, but the mechanics and system is functional enough I can't give it, I cannot give it garbage fire. It's too good for it. I hate this book, but I still have to give it playable. Because it's not using the Powered by the Apocalypse system. The system as it is is relatively simple to understand. It works fine. It works for the most part. There's weaknesses in it. But at no point do I feel like I'm playing a piece of shit like Extreme Meat Punks forever. However, we didn't finish the book. Which is a big indictment about that. But, but yes, you know what I'll so also much. say? You know what I'll also say? We got through more of it than fucking Chalt. We might try to do one more video on Chalt one day, but fuck me, that one's actually worse. Because you know you know what this piece of shit has? A thought-out setting. I don't like a lot of the things the author says in it. I think a lot of it's uncreative. But you, you know what Grand Cross is? A mostly complete set setting. There are characters that you can use for it. At the end of the day, I, I'm complaining a lot about it because I, I think one of the big things I hate about this is I have seen this book before. It was called Robotic Age. It handled it better. Robotic Age did this sort of setting better. Cyberpunk does this setting better. Shadowrun, despite being a very different kind of breed than this, does it better. That's kind of the problem with this book. It, it is replaceable. It is obsolete before it came out. And that's another thing. It is dated. So I'll rate it playable, but I don't rec um Personally, I don't think I can recommend uh, this book. What about you? I mean, yeah. No, I... Because of the setting, it's just not that good. It is a very much just a mess of trying to figure out what's going on. I mean, you can summarize it as you're in space, you're on a space station, and corporations are mucking around with people. And you're constantly you're, struggling to make money. Yeah. yeah. And while that's an interesting premise as a setting, they go into detail, and it... They focus a, on the as, wrong parts. And it just doesn't make sense. Like, here's an example. Why is the railway network... Why is the railway network controlled by a company that just started a year? And how did a single politician allow this to happen? Because there's at least 500 other ones. You know what, you know what I'll say? I feel the same exasperation, or this is similar, to Disney Star Wars with the sequels. And their lore. How the fuck does the First Order exist? Where the fuck is the New Republic? What the fuck is going on? What happened to the Jedi? Where why, are all these why, ships why being built? Why is Leia Organa being related to Vader, Darth Vader? Why does that instantly destroy her political career? That's one. That's a good example. Uh, why how did the did, New how Republic did, disband their military? How come they're able to see the planets exploding from light from millions of light years across from the giant laser? Did Starkiller Base move to the solar system that that's from? How come Ray instantly knows how to fly a Corellian cruiser when she's never actually shown to operate a vehicle before then? Why is Finn, a man who was traumatized by the death of his brother in arms in a conflict, 
instantly cheering after murdering an entire company of his own brothers that he was trained for from a young age with. Why is it that the guy who screamed traitor has more emotion and feeling than Captain Flasma, as played by Brienne of Tarth? Why did I, why did they kill Oscar Isaacs and then reshoot it so that he wasn't Oscar Isaacs when they could just replace his role and then give him a different role who's not Oscar Isaacs? Why did they make Adam Driver act like an emotional man-child when he should have just been a big intimidating guy? Like that's the th the thing is that within the sequels, you have the premise of let's say there's a rising empire threat and the New Republic isn't paying attention to it. Whatever. Like, the basics. You know, fuck you're like, it. We okay, need a palate but... cleanser. Let's burg about Star Wars for a little bit. All right. So here, here's my idea for the New Order. If we're going to do a sequel run, I actually did a nap series of napkin scripts. The New Order is, a, is an almost Juch state-like terrorist organization made of the Empire's most diehard support, Emperor's most diehard supporters elements of Sith cult worship, but it's, at the end of the day, it is essentially North Korean-style political jucha, where they believe that Shiv is the eternal emperor. And they are considered radical psychos, even by... Because the New Republic won, but it didn't unify what was originally the Old Republic and Empire. There's the, there's the many Imperial remnants out there. You know, a variety of guys. But these guys, though, are crazy. And they're plotting shit. Up to and including eventually trying to make their own Death Star cannon. Not the gun, not the whole Death Star, but just the cannon. The, the galaxy gun. Essentially the galaxy gun. And, and, and the way these huge crazy First Orders work is they fight like guerrilla warriors. They actually build, automa they build uh, small shipyards that they can tow to different star systems using hyperspace. They use a lot of imperial, old imperial remnants they scrap on. Also, here, here's my idea that should be a thing. If you make Rey a Jedi, you know who you should also make a Jedi? His name is Finn. He had a character arc that should have been carried through. Make him Kyle Katarn like he was meant to be. Because Finn's role is basically Kyle Katarn, but as Jar Jar Binks. I actually think Jar Jar Binks had more dignity than Finn. And Jar Jar Binks least, stepped in animal poop. At least Jar Jar Binks became a politician on a galactic level. Jar Jar Binks had a better character arc than everyone in the sequels. <laughs> I, guess, I, th I think at the end of the day, the issue is failed potential. Well, no, the thing, uh, the, the thing at the end of the day is Kathleen Kennedy threw out the original script. Because remember, George gave them the napkin script for like three movies. That they could take or choose how they wanted, but they just threw it out in a fit of arrogance. I, I'm talking just Hardwired Island and sequels in terms of the plot. There could have been something done with it. Even if like, let's say, you know, even throwing it out what George Lucas wanted, there was always the potential because, again, if you're ripping off episode four, you still have this whole galaxy you can set up and everything you can do, but instead, they fumbled. They failed. And we're left with this mess of a series. Oh, actually, no, I don't remember. To... I didn't use the galaxy gun in episode four. Do you know what I did as a twist instead of it being a... Uh of it being Starkiller base in my original napkin script. Oh, it was a break. It was a prison breakout. It was like the great escape or the guns of Navarone, where they're just trying to inter infiltrate a fortress. The first order had this free prisoners. Their big mission was actually to save people like Admiral Akbar, who was taken by them because they wanted to torture information out of him for Imperial, for the new Republic Naval fleet maneuvers. Oh, you, you know, another thing I did, I had the Knights of Ren appear. They, they, instead of being Sith, they were a dark Jedi order founded by Kylo. When he, when he, like from his friend group. Also because they fucked up. Uh, I did, uh, an idea I had is since they didn't, they clearly didn't want Luke to actually marry and they wanted him to, I guess, be a loser. Do you want to know how the ending of my napkin trilogy worked based on the sequel? 
It's Luke on his deathbed. And it, it, it is Luke on his deathbed. His nephew is married to essentially Mara Jade. She, uh, Ray ends with ends up with Finn. They they are continuing the legacy of the Order. He dies like Yoda in his bed, but he's pleased because after the initial failure of his Order, he and his students were able to bring him back, redeem his nephew, and he didn't die like Vader, which is a big plus. And he dies, and he goes off to where the, whatever the life force is with his friend with his close friends Han and Leia. Because they didn't have that scene in Episode 7 when they had a chance. So the big ending is Luke dies and goes to the equivalent of 4-7. At peace. So you mean your ending actually has our characters' sacrifice and death and all the effort that they made in the original trilogy mean something? Yeah. Isn't it great? Like, in that one, the loss of the original Luke's Jedi Order, as according to Legends, was actually... A setback. He actually built an even better one afterwards. I made Holdo not a piece of shit. Basically, I, I made it so that her her thing was actually she was a dip, more a diplomat than a you know those political appointed officers. She's not she's good at one thing, and that is knowing people, and also keeping secrets. That's why, that's why, like, I, I made her less terrible and actually gave her and the equivalent of, what's his face? Oscar Isaac's character who di- who should have died. I forget his name. Oh. Thank you. Uh, I, I just replaced him with Temin. Temin Wexley from the EU. Uh, I, I made, I, I, just, I just said, like, okay, Oscar Isaacs is mad, so here's what I think. You reshoot his death at the beginning of the movie, right? With a different guy. Like like some random asshole you hire off. And then just have him play Temin. Like when he shows back up, he's Temin Wexley rather than Poe Dameron. That way you don't have to explain how the fuck he got there. There's a story for another time. Uh, okay. Um... I would just I would just say shoot legends. Or not Legends, Le- Legacy. Le- just do Star Wars Legacy. Any of the Legacy stories would have been better, but like, this was just napkin stuff based on what they had. There is potential, there was potential for here to be better, but the problem is I think it's kind of overwhelmed by other series that exist out there anyway. Because at the end of the day, that's the problem with Hardwired Island. It's kind of generic, but it also has this kind of distasteful edge to it, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, the author's bitterness kind of leaks through at times, and it just kind of makes it go from, oh, to, uh So, uh, yeah, so good news. I We don't ever have to look at this pile of fucking horse shit again. I'm going to play the celebration so music. The Ewok one. Oh, oh. The Ewok one. Yeah, baby. Look that as we burn this book. <laughs> I don't think oh, it's quite actually, worth garbage fire. I, 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 no, no, it isn't. So, uh, if it, you're wondering, uh, next week we'll not actually have a stream because that's Good Friday, and you know, people might be occupado with family during Good Friday and Easter during that time. So, not happening next week. Uh, the week after, though, well, I mean, hey, uh, it's after Easter. And Vampire uh, Rome, Requiem for Rome talks about, you know, the early Christians. I think it's fitting to cover Requiem for Rome again after, you know, Good Friday. So, yeah, uh, two weeks from now, because we'll take a small break for Good Friday and then come back and it'll be Requiem for Rome again. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank God we never have to look at Hardwired Island ever again.